Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to CR Nations Cup. I am Motic. I'm joined by Ashtix today. So we're going to get into Venezuela versus Montenegro. Two really strong teams. Venezuela haven't actually lost so far, so they're doing really well in this tournament. Yeah, and we're going to see what Montenegro is going to do today. Uh, they have a few very good players in Montenegro. They have Torun, they have uh, Sasa, they have Gorimester. So they can really put it off one way or another. We're going to see that today. So, um, do you know do you know the players in uh, in Venezuela? I know a couple of the players in Venezuela. I know they're really really strong players. So do you want to list off some of them? Um, you think the best so far. I know we, there is uh, X Pedro, um, uh, which is a CRL player. If I'm yeah. not wrong, I uh, think there's a few players actually going to CRL, isn't there? Yeah, well, we can see it right now. X yeah, Pedro is there. there. I think Trenary Luis is also he's a coach, right? Yeah, he is a coach. Really strong player though. So I think he's going to be doing pretty well, but it looks like he's up against Torrin, so let's see how he's actually going to do against that. Yeah, and Fuzgo I think is also a very, very good uh, player. So that's going to be very, a very interesting match. Definitely. We're going to have some really good matches tonight. We're going to get on to them soon. So, we're, so if you guys want to actually check out our website, it's www.crnations.com. You've got every information on that website, really. Uh, and you've got all the replays on YouTube, uh, slash LVP Clash. And also you've got the Twitter, uh, at CR Nations Cup. Yep. You know, it, all the infos, and you've got also the hashtag. CR Nations Playoff. So if you want to tweet, us, tweet at us with CR Nations Playoff, that'd be awesome. Let us know what team you think is going to win, Venezuela or Montenegro. This is going to be some really good matches tonight, though. Yeah, really. I, I'm really, I mean, I, I don't know what to say for that match, really. Because, like, on the paper, Venezuela is looking very strong. They're undefeated, Definitely. so... They can, I mean, you know, on the paper, they, they are the favorite, but Montenegro... They could pull it back, you never know. I mean, Montenegro, again, a really strong team, got some really strong players in it. They have lost to a couple of teams, but again, they could pull it off, you just never know. But Venezuela, that really strong team, I mean, dominated in pretty much every match so far, so crazy at the moment, I think. But we've seen, we've seen Turkey dominating it every single match, and on the very last match against Ecuador, they lost 4-0, and they were out of the competition. Same Definitely. for the USA. Yeah, I mean, it can happen. It just could be on the the players could be tired, you never know what's up with the players, where they are, where they're playing from. So it's just like, it just depends on the situation sometimes. You really need to be awake to play in one of these tournaments. You have to be so strong at playing, to be honest with you. Loads of practice, and even if you're a little bit too tired, I mean, you're going to maybe do a couple misplays. It's just, I don't know, it's just crazy sometimes what can actually happen if you don't practice. If you're just tired even, you just can't play as well as you normally would. Yeah, and clearly, I mean... That, that's going to be inc in impressive, really. And uh, right now, you can see on the screen the next match that's going to happen. And look at this Colombia versus Brazil, just right after that match. Uh, and tomorrow, we've got United Kingdom versus China. One of my favorite teams, of course, United Kingdom. And then Argentina versus France, my favorite team, France, oh, course, as, you can, oh, as you can hear it. <laughs> So yeah, that's I think we're both uh, maybe a little bit biased towards our team, I think, to be honest with you. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. As well, I mean, we're in the, in the playoffs now, so everything can happen. And they, they, I mean, if they lose, if any team lose, they're out. There's so, so much at stake in these next couple matches, to be honest with you. Anything can happen. I mean, this is the semi-finals, so we could go anywhere from here. Yeah, really. And so they only need four uh, wins, four best of three, one to qualify for the next uh, for the next round. So yeah. everything can happen so quickly. They do, yeah, definitely. They, they don't need kind of too much. I mean, again, Venezuela have been doing really well. So I'm thinking they might pull it off, but you never know. Montenegro could actually pull it off in the end. Yeah, and um, we were t we were talking about that before. Uh, we know in Montenegro has Torun as a player, and he's yeah, a very, very good strong player. player. He's been playing some unusual decks, though, don't you? Very think? unusual. I think <laughs> that's that's the kind of player who have like only one deck, like one very specific deck. He's playing a giant skeleton deck, guys. You're gonna see that in just a moment, I believe. But I mean, if you play the deck enough and you know exactly where to play, play anything, I mean, you could dominate any deck. Even if you have a counter deck, if you know where to place things, you could easily still win. To be honest with you. Yeah, so now we're going to have a look uh, at the bracket uh, of all the, all the matches that are going to happen in the, in this week. Uh, we've got Colombia, Brazil, as you saw. As you saw. Um, we've got UK versus China. We've also uh, El Salvador versus Ecuador. Russia versus Italy. That happened already that happened yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Italy, again, were, um, were really strong at the start, I think. Midway through, Russia kind of pulled it back, but Italy managing to just clench the win at the end there. Yeah. And then we've got also the, the other part of the bracket with Taiwan, with France, with Argentina, and I mean, anyway, every single match 
is going to be extremely close. I think extremely so, intense. I mean, there's some solid players in every single team. Some players going to CRL as well, and CRL is such a huge tournament. You need to play so well to do that. All right, so now we're going to have a little video explaining everything. Welcome to the Nations Cup, the national teams of World Tournament. Every national team has six players. Each player plays a single set, which is a best of three, and they can ban one card. The matches are made by seven sets. In case of a tie of three sets, the captain of each nation gets to choose the player that will compete for the match point. It will be an emotional roller coaster. Enjoy the worlds. Welcome back. So that was actually the rules of the, the tournament. So some really good rules, I think, to be honest with you. Um, some really good, and even just the part where the tower defense is, um, the tower is, uh, yeah, where they, they actually play off the tower HP as well, to be honest with you. The lowest tower HP normally wins. Yeah, some. I mean, I know some people don't really like that rule. Yeah, and I can understand that. But we, I mean, you you can't really rematch. It's a bit complicated. Definitely. I think after six minutes, I think it's it's a pretty fair rule. In yeah, the end. to be honest, it's quite a long match. I mean, if they're playing for that long, and the towers maybe one towers two thousand HP, the next tower is five hundred HP. I think that tower with five hundred HP should definitely lose. To be honest with you, because I mean, if there's more time in the game, they would definitely be able to pull it off. Yeah, even if, even if it's a close game, you know, it, it becomes a whole new strategy after like, you know, in the last, ver in the very last minute, you're just spell cycling and yeah, trying to get you're some not damage. Even try yeah, you're not trying to build up a big push there, trying to spell cycle. I mean, when your towers are on about six, 700 HP, I mean, that's all you need to do. If you overcommit with maybe a graveyard too early, get no damage done and they get a counter push, you can lose your tower in seconds, to be honest with you. Yeah, and to be honest, I mean, I like that rule because, you know, we don't see any, um, any draw. You know, sometimes people try to kind of lock the game yep. so they don't take any damage and they know they're going to go to the throw and so they can rematch and have a better matchup. Yeah, so we, we can't see this in this in this tournament. Like they have to fight until the end for yep. whatever, you know, they, they have to try. Because yeah, they know there definitely. won't be any throw. I mean, if you if you look at kind of like your expo decks, for example, they try to do as much damage at the start to get that connection with the expo and then they just defend closer to the end of the game and just win yeah. on purely HP, to be honest with you. So. Okay, now we're, we're back on the lineup that we saw uh, just a minute ago. Yep. Um, and you can see, so, I mean, as, as we were saying, uh, there are very uh, some very popular players um, on Venezuela's side with X Pedro, with Trainer Luis, uh, Fusgo, and also the other, I, I don't know personally, but. Yeah, I've, I know Trainer Luis, Luis, I've seen him a lot around about. Um, a couple, uh, Pedro, definitely I've heard of his name, but a few of the players, I'm not too sure. I have casted a couple of their games as well, so I have been seeing them. So we're going to be going into the first game pretty soon though. We have Raider versus True Alpha coming up next. So Raiders, I mean Raider's been playing a lot of Giant. He's been playing a lot of Logbait and Golem as well. A little bit of Lava Hound in there as well. So we might see some of those decks come out pretty soon I think. And I mean his win ratio, I guess. Hmm, I mean he's 80% win ratio. So that it's is good. crazy win percent ratio. His favorite card looks like it seems to be Giant to be honest with you. So. Yeah, True Alpha on his side um, doesn't have such a great win rate, no, to be honest. No, but you never know. He could pull it off in the end. You might have just had some bad times, and he could maybe even just pull it off in the end. That's still a 40% win ratio. Looks like his favorite card's actually Expo as well. So, But we're going to get into the first game now. We have Telsa and Balloon Band. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And True Alpha is going to go with a Barbarian Hut. Oh, so we got a hut deck coming out from True Alpha. I think it is what what deck could this be? Is this going to be the Golem deck? Or I is believe going to be the Graveyard deck. I'm not entirely sure because there's decks, uh, Graveyard decks with this as well. I've seen Golem decks with this with the Night Witch, some Fire Spirits in it as well. So you might be able to see that deck. That might be. Oh, I don't know. We we can't really know. Uh, at yeah, that's the, the first two cards. To yeah, be honest with you, you can't really guess the deck. But we have to have a Poison going down the right hand side, taking down the Electro Wizard. I think we're lowering his HP anyway. I believe Raider is playing a Pekka deck. Looks like it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it looks like Pekka control anyway, but you never know. They could play something else in the end. Mm, but mine, yeah, it's minor Pekka control, I think. And that's a graveyard for True Alpha, clearly with the with the Ice Golem. Uh, we got connection on with the miner though, getting a little bit of chip damage there, coming for a little push here. I think that Mega Minion is going to go down. Not really going to do too much, especially with the Archers being there as well. But again, we don't know where True Alpha is going to go. It look maybe this graveyard deck, but he might just pull out the Golem in the end. Alright, so now we've got the hut back again. There is a poison to try and uh, chip away that, that hut. 
Raider really doesn't want to see those Barbarians on the field. He knows that he, it, if he let True Alpha really settle down in this game, then he is not going to be able to do anything and he needs to cheap away the, the right hand side tower as much as he can before double elixir time. Definitely, I mean if you build up that bar, hut, bar puts enough it's just too much pressure at one lane so he can't allow him to do that so he really needs to stop those barbs from building up. The poison going down offensively from True Alpha again getting a little bit of damage to that electro wizard plus the tower as well and Bandit is coming forward so but the Mega Minion they get a swipe off there. Alright now again Raider is going to try to chip away the tower yeah, we've got that Slowly. minor poison coming in. We haven't seen the P.E.K.K.A. The P.E.K.K.A. eventually going down, so we do see this minor P.E.K.K.A. control deck. So they try and push forward here, and Barbadian is up again. I feel, I don't know, what do you think about this P.E.K.K.? Is it going to be able to make it through, or is he going to happen I don't think here? so. I think the main reason why Raider is playing the P.E.K.K.A. is just to try to, you know, pressure a true alpha, so he can send the minor and the poison on the tower and, and chip yeah. away that tower. The P.E.K.K.A. is really yeah. just here, you know, to... to to, you know, to earn some time in the end. Yep, you can see there, he placed his miner, did get a little bit of chip damage done. Alright, now we've got the uh, Ice Golem, and there's going to be the Graveyard just right now. Graveyard coming up, so this is the push, this is really late as well, I mean, we're 20 seconds left in double time, uh, so double elixir coming into overtime now. And he, uh, Trialfa didn't play the poison, I'm quite surprised, he could, have, he could have had a good poison here. He used it offensively with his miner, he's probably trying to get that bar put down as best as he possibly can, I guess, with that poison. But again, got more chip damage done again. I mean, he dealt with it pretty well, he didn't take too much damage to his tower, it's about a thousand damage. But oh, we're going to see another graveyard come up again from uh, from True Alpha. So and the poison this time. Poison going down, doing a little bit, um, guards going down, don't know if he's going to get much oh, damage here though. Are some skeletons here, tipping with that tower. We do it. That was an aggressive poison as well from True Alpha. Yeah, yeah aggressive poison again from Raider. He's defending everything. Watch out though, the Mega Minion. Okay, there will be a nice golem there. And Raider is still leading the game. He's looking pretty good right now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. A couple more miners, and I think that uh, yeah, Raider's going to be able to get it. Uh, but but we have to have a Pekka here now, so we're probably going to see a miner pretty soon come out. Yeah, and uh, the graveyard was pretty well defended here for uh, Raider. Even though, even though there was a poison, an offensive poison. Yep. He has and now used the, the, uh, you think he would have taken less damage if he used the poison in the graveyard? Because I, I mean, this no tower is down at 737 HP at the moment, but I think it looks like True Alpha is going to take it right hand side. Uh, sorry, Raider takes the tower on the right hand side for their first game. So really well played there from Raider. He played well. He, he played, he played really very, well, very definitely. well. He played so well that game, to be honest with you. A lot of control, actually using his poison mainly aggressively instead of defensively. So really well played there. Took a bit of tower damage, but definitely yeah. managed to pull it off in the Honestly, end. Honestly, that was a bit surprising. You know, using that poison offensively, that, that was quite risky. That was, you know? to be honest with you, yeah. I mean, he, he, he could have taken so much damage from the graveyard, but I guess he's played it so much that maybe he knows that he can actually defend without using the poison. He needs to, I guess, use the poison on the Barbarian Hut, because yeah. if you let that build up too much and the graveyard comes after that, you probably are going to just lose your tower, to be honest with you. There's going to yeah. be too much there, and you cannot control that. And he used, pick up, he used the pick up two or three times uh, just, did, to, yeah, just to earn some time. You know, yeah, just definitely. not really trying to get also it on the tower. Also backing up the miner as well, I guess, because it's tanking for the miner. The miner's exactly. getting a little bit extra chip damage, forcing you to actually take down that miner as fast as you possibly can. Otherwise, it's going to do the majority of the damage to the tower. But we're in the second game now. We have Raider versus True Alpha. And we have a peck up for starting off at the back this time. We have exactly the same matchup. <laughs> definitely exactly the same matchup. So we've got minor control from Raider and True Alpha coming out with the Graveyard deck. Maybe potentially, but you never know. He might pull that Golem out, you never know. But I think it's probably going to be Graveyard. Seems to be exactly the same matchup. And here the P.E.K.K.A. is again going to do the job. There is, there will there will be a defensive poison here for uh, True Alpha. Not really, I don't really like that poison to be mm -hmm. honest. Me neither to be honest with you. But I mean he has taken that Electro Wizard down. And the P.E.K.K.A. is still coming forward. So again, I mean Raider has got quite a bit of damage. He's still got this P.E.K.K.A. up. Not going to get anything done to the tower. So, Raider is looking pretty good in this matchup so far. He's got good control. He's taken that Barbarian down, hut down with the P.E.K.K.A. So really good control there. It does look like True Alpha is slightly ahead in Elixir though, by the looks of it anyway. I think True Alpha has to be more aggressive. Yeah, definitely. Clearly, because if he, if he plays passively like the last game, he's just going to lose. Definitely. I mean, he did go for a lot of graveyards near the end of the game, so I don't know if he's going to be able to... He's waiting for that again. He doesn't want to overcommit. He wants to build up those Barbarian huts and get that graveyard afterwards, so... Well, for now, there is no poison for Raider, so the Barbarian Hut is uh, looking pretty strong. <laughs> it is, to be honest with you. I mean, he's not used anything on it so far. We do have an Electro Wizard coming forward, going into the poison again, though. So again, just 
getting that ledge wizard down. I'm not too sure about that though. You can maybe get a little bit more more from your poison, but wants to take that ledge wizard down. I think he wants to cycle. Yeah, yeah he probably wants to just cycle cycling, to yeah, definitely. To to get another hut on the on the field, that will be pretty good. Yeah, I mean if he gets two huts, there's gonna be an insane amount of pressure. Oh look at that miner, that was completely miner, shut down. Yeah, the Valk taken down straight away. Did get a little bit chip damage on the tower there though, didn't actually focus the Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie still coming forward here with full HP with archers behind it as well. So still, a, mm, don't know how strong this push is to be honest with you because it is the, the archers that go into that poison. But look at this, second second Barbarian hut and the poison was just used on the other one who was already dying. So here it's looking very good for True Alpha. He managed to really settle down in the beginning of the game and now he's going to go aggressive with the graveyards. But that Barbarian hut to the back, it just means I guess the peck is not going to be able to deal with that Barbarian hut at all. Yeah, and there's already a second one now. True Alpha yeah, is looking two. very, very yeah, good. There's huge pressure up this right hand lane. Got double Barbarian huts and the poison going down as well. And one of the Barbarian huts, again, there's going to be huge pressure here. The peck are doing a good job of clearing them up, but didn't quite get too far there. Okay, for now, it's looking, it, I mean, on the paper, it's looking for a true alpha now. He is taking a lot of damage with the miner and the poison every single time, and he didn't get much damage on the tower so far. But I mean, Raider is running this control deck, so he might be able to control them, and then come back with the miner afterwards. I've seen it so many times. We have the log plus poison. Oh, we've got the poison coming out from true alpha offensively, getting a little bit more tower damage done. And there's so much pressure. Look at all these barbarians coming up the right-hand side. I think Raider needes to go with the P.E.K.K.A. He needs to defend with the P.E.K.K.A. Put like a uh, uh, wall just <laughs> in front of the, of the tower and then counter attack. Yeah, I think he has tried it so many times, but I mean, I think this Mega Minion plus the Barbarians is just taking it down, to be honest with you, especially with those archers in the back. And the P.E.K.K.A. is here. Away at it. So the Mega Minion's just doing so much damage to the P.E.K.K.A. The Mega Minion top of the P.E.K.K.A. now, and I think it's going to go down to Raider's P.E.K.K.A. So he might be able to get a push here. I mean, there's still a decent HP P.E.K.K.A. We've got Mega Minion just behind it there. So the Peck actually making his way over to the tower as well, not actually going over to the Barbarian hut, but not quite doing anything there. But a little bit and more damage to that right hand tower though. Look at that poison for uh, for Raider that was taking the two Barbarian huts, plus the tower, That's what that was value. Maybe a little bit of a mis misplacement there from yeah. True Alpha to be honest with you. Could have put them a little bit more spread out I think. Yeah, but still, True Alpha is uh, looking pretty strong still, here yeah, with another graveyard. Yeah, I mean, he could just go for a poison uh, cycle now and probably get the tower down and just try and control this push from uh, Raider coming in. But there is a bandit still coming forward, Pekka, and we got Ledge Wizard behind there as well, so still pushing forward. There is a big push here for uh, Raider. That's not the end. The Valkyrie is going to uh, stop everything except that bandit, but there will be the Barbarian from the hut once again. So strong, defending everything. Definitely just huge pressure from that Barbarian hut. We have a Graveyard going up again. Probably going to get a couple of chips off there. Even an aggressive poison. That's going to be enough. As well. That's going to be enough. Gonna go in. So it's 1-1 one, one at the moment. I think Log going and taking it for True Alpha. I mean, it was still quite close there. There was only 500 HP left in True Alpha's tower. But True Alpha, I felt, just had so much pressure in that game. That was such a crazy game. And this time we saw like True Alpha really adapted. He, he yep. did understand how to play the matchup. And he just made it. You know, He yep. came back exactly the same matchup. This time he won. And now... One, I, one. Think, I think he just he played his graveyards a lot better, I think. Yeah. Built up the Barbarian huts just a little bit more and then went for a better push with the graveyard, having more of a build-up, I think, with that graveyard. Yeah, and I believe also uh, Raider did not really adapt. I think no. he played exactly the same way I did as, yeah. as he did for the just first game. Just kept trying to put that peck in the back, trying to just save time and get that miner in, but didn't quite get that miner in enough to well, do enough damage. That miner that went on top of the Valk, I yeah. mean, that can do anything whatsoever, so yeah, that clearly. just didn't do anything. I mean, it didn't even target onto the Valkyrie. It didn't tar target onto the Valkyrie either, so... Yeah, I think I think Raider needed to to adapt to the situation, and he played it exactly the same way, whereas True Alpha was leading in this game, so he, he, he should have tried something else, something different, to, to take the league back. I think it's so hard with his deck, though. I mean, how do you take out the Barbarian hut? with his deck. I mean, you can't poison it because poison's not going to take it down. You can't get that P.E.K.K.A. into the Barbarian Hut because he just controls it with other units kiting the P.E.K.K.A. away. So well, it's just so hard to take that Barbarian I believe Hut sometimes. At some point, no, for, for example, when you send the Miner on the Valkyrie, I think he should have tried to take out the, the Barbarian Hut, you know, yep. try to send a Miner on the Barbarian Hut to really... Yeah, definitely. I could have controlled it just a little bit better, especially the P.E.K.K.A. tanking the tower as well. Definitely. But we're getting to the second match now. We are Raider versus True Alpha 1-1 one, one at the moment. And this could be the last game. Archers once again for True Alpha. He's maybe... <laughs> they might be playing exactly the same deck once again. Mm -hmm. Okay, Raider with a Bendit. 
So we're probably not going to see Expo. It does true alpha. I don't know. I've seen an Expo with all these units in it, but we don't know if it's going to be Expo. The Tesla has been banned, so we're probably not going to see a Expo deck. So we have the Valk coming down the left-hand side, going to be able to stop the Miner. Looks like Raider's going for this P.E.K.K.A. control again. Yeah, it seems to be exactly the same matchup once again. Yeah, he hasn't really switched up his deck. I mean, I think maybe he's trying to just play... Maybe he thinks that True Alpha's thinking he's going to switch decks, maybe, but... I don't know. But we actually do have the P.E.K.K.A. coming forward to Barbadian Hut. It's just the same decks again. That's for really both surprising. Players. Yeah, but I mean, the three times in a row from both players. That's I think I've never seen this. I've, no, I've never seen it either. Normally they switch up their decks. I mean, they have been playing a lot of different decks. Watch like out, the Mega Minion is on the tower. Oh, so much damage on the left-hand tower from the Mega Minion. That's crazy. 1,470 HP and we're only a minute and 15 seconds into the game. That's just crazy damage to have at the start of the game. So it does look like Raider has pulled slightly ahead here. Yeah, no, not only slightly. <laughs> Just here, yeah. Clearly, like, Raider uh, took the lead here, and True Alpha is not settled down for double elixir time, so it's really not looking good for him. We still got this Barbarian hop building up, though, but I think might. Are we going to see some more Barbarians? We do see the last Barbarians come up on the left-hand side. Let's see if we get anything down here. Barbarian Hut going down again, so just trying to build up these Barbarian Huts and just trying to build that pressure and then graveyarding in the end. So we see an offensive poison, so potentially True Alpha could actually go for the graveyard in the end here because the poison just went down from Raider to try and stop that Barbarian Hut. I'm not sure he can afford it. Yep. So yeah, he's just going to cycle in the back. Oh, we're okay. going on the right-hand side with the graveyard. We've got the Ice Golem as well. Okay, and there's the poison here. Aggressive poison for the graveyard. And the P.E.K.K.A. will be there trying to defend. But True Alpha is getting a lot of damage on the right-hand side tower. Not enough to, to, to come back in the game. Definitely. I mean, he hasn't done much damage, I guess. I mean, on Raider's tower. Raider looks like he has good control of this matchup so far. And the, the minor poison getting a little bit more damage onto the tower again. 30 seconds to go. And... We're not too far away now. All right, the barbarians who turned right this time to try and uh, and get that tower. And Shrafa is again going to try to change lane. That's really surprising. Yeah, he's back to the left hand lane again. And barbarian huts aren't going up that side. The Pekka there helping defend with the bandit, not really getting much damage. And with the graveyard there, um, 600 HP left on True Alpha's tower now. So just not far to go. A couple, maybe a miner and a poison. Yeah, that's going to be a miner. To take it. Yep, minor poison goes down the Valkyrie, going down to try and stop the miner. But not really doing too much there. We got the pack and the mega board. minion. The mega minion is ah uh, no, it's going to turn on onto the barbarians. It's switched over to the ice golem actually. So good defensive ice golem on the left hand side. Okay, oh, that's Banda it. actually charging through the tower. So well played by Raider. We got two one, and it's looking good for Venezuela so far. Yeah, well, on, on this match, well, this time Raider was clearly leading from the start, basically from the very start. Yeah, he managed to have those really good control mega minion swings, and that was it. Yep, I mean, the Mech Minion, if you allow it to get to the tower, it can just do so much damage to the tower, to be honest with you. Do not want to allow that Mega Minion to get to the tower. Yeah, clearly, and I, I'm still surprised. I mean, I don't understand why did they play, like, the three, the, the, the same deck three times in a row. Yeah, I mean, they could have switched up their decks, but maybe both players, they were just thinking, if I play the same deck, maybe my opponent might switch their deck. But what do you feel is better? Do you think the Barbarian Hut Graveyard deck's better, or do you think the P.E.K.K.A. Minor Control is a better deck? for that matchup. I think the P.E.K.K.A. is better. Yeah, I definitely. Think. It's got the Poison, it's got a Miner, and it's just so strong. So we're going to be looking at the next matches coming up soon. We've got Pedro versus Fool Venom coming up next. Yeah, so I was, as we told you uh, before, Pedro is a CRL player. Yep. So he's a very, very good player. He's a really strong player. Definitely to get in CRL, you need to get that 20 wins. Then you need to even go to the Combines to join a team after that. So it takes so much to get to CRL, to be honest with you. Yeah, and um, against him we have Volvinum, who's also a very good player from um, from uh, Montenegro. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to see what happens there. <laughs> and for now, they're just staying at 10 Elixir. Not to make any mistake at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you put something too big down too early and your opponent counter pushes on the other side, you could lose your tower instantly at the start. Not even necessarily something big, you know, but only, you know, a defensive unit that you absolutely need if the opponent is playing something, you know, sort of kind of deck. You can't risk it as a yeah, first card. Definitely. You need to cycle. Yep. They're, they might not have any cycle cards in their hand. They might just have big units. So, but yeah, I mean, Pedro, I mean, he does use a lot of giant decks, to be honest with you, a little bit of La uh, Lava Hound Miner as well. So we might see some of those decks come out tonight. Uh, we have Mega Minion going up the left hand side for a start, just both players cycling through right now. We are, we are into the first minute of the game as well, so no player playing anything until the first minute of the game. 
Again, just still not playing. <laughs> still not playing anything, no. It's crazy these matches though, like when even sometimes when it gets to the double elixir point before they're even going to play anything, but they just both know that they play something too early, they might just lose that match. So Pedro is playing a, a mi I mean, not, not mega minion, but a minion. Yep, so we're going full Venom coming out with the giant deck, so he's facing the giant in the back, Lava okay. coming out from Pedro now. So again, a popular deck from Pedro. Okay, maybe not that popular. Yes. Hold on, <laughs> might be. Okay, so for Vril Venom, there is a Sparky. Sparky coming out. I mean, I saw Sparky yesterday, and it did actually win the match. I feel if you don't have the maybe even the spells to take it down, or you don't control it properly, that Sparky can do so much damage. But Inferno Dragon destroying that giant, destroying everything. Even the Sparky behind it. the Sparky as well. Definitely, that's crazy. I mean, the Tombstone had really good control of the Sparky there. Couldn't really do much. And here Vulvenum is in trouble. We have the Inferno Dragon coming forward and still some pups down there. Towers so down. Power. Mm, yep. I think the Inferno Dragon. The Inferno Dragon just has so much HP. When it gets that charge up, it takes the tower down so fast. Yeah, Vulvenum I think was too aggressive on the left hand side. He shouldn't have put that set, uh, that Sparky behind it. Yeah, definitely. But I think he kind of had to. He needed to put some pressure on so that um, so Pedro had to actually use something to defend it. But this Inferno Dragon is just dealing with this yeah, so no. well. On the right hand side, we have Lava Hound plus Balloon. Oh, is going minion to be Hard going on top of it, though. So I think that Balloon's going to be able to get taken down, I think, before it reaches the tower. And Pedro's not going to react to it. He's, he's going to try to defend on the left hand side. I think that was a good option. But still, Vulvenum manages to. Oh no, he didn't. Mm, nope. Fireball, <laughs> Great fireball here. It's a last minute fireball coming from Pedro, stopping that Sparky on the left hand side. Could have done loads of damage to the tower. Still needs to deal with these minions, though. Loads of minions in this deck. This is definitely a fireball zappy deck, I guess. So clearly here, a good choice for uh, for Pedro. I think he, he might not have been able to uh, stop that push on the left hand side, but, but he had the fireball, so everything's all right. But yeah, that was risky, you I know. There was so much air in that Lava Hound deck, I feel that maybe didn't have enough air to actually counter it, so having to go for those pushes instead of trying to defend the push, because I mean, he could have just used the Fireball on the Minion Horde and still push through with his Lava Hound. And his he and his he made a push. choice. I think, I think that's one of the hardest choices you can ever make in Clash Royale. It's, do I defend? Or do I do I do I go full all in all with my push? Definitely, it's really hard to make a choice because you, you really need to be able to to know if you're going to be able to defend or not. Yeah, I mean, if it's a lava hound deck, it's got um, arrows in it, and all you've got is minion horde. You cannot put that minion horde down to try and stop that lava hound. To be honest with you, at all, yeah. you'll lose so much elixir on that trade, and you'll probably even lose your tower as well. But again, with that sparky deck, not that, there was quite a bit. I mean, there was a lot of minions in there, but the fire the fireball is always going to be able to control it. I think. Uh, and. On the first move, we clearly saw, um, you know, Vulvenum going on the left-hand side. He couldn't do anything against the, the push, you know, yep, coming at him, definitely. and and he he gave so much value with that push with the uh, giant and the yeah. and the Sparky, and then uh, there was the Lava Hound tank tanking yeah, for everything. I think that was the mistake probably, but he couldn't really predict that the Lava Hound was going to go on the left-hand side. I don't think anyway. Yeah. Because he did have that giant down first, I think, anyway. So he he, he has waited like so much time not to make any mistake, and in yeah. the end, unfortunately. Yep, Lava Hound prevailed. Alright, so now we're again sitting at 10 Oh, so we're going to be sitting here probably <laughs> for the next maybe minute and a half. We're going to have to wait and see. As you can see, the Princess and Moats whistling away there, waiting for both players to play some cards. My minions in the back. Oh, minions. Are we going to see a Mega Minion come out as well? We actually have a Zap going down on the minions on the right-hand side just to cycle a little bit. But not on the tower. Mm. Kind of surprising. He just I can't believe he didn't hit the tower there, I thought. Yeah. Alright, Lava Hound. That's a Lava Hound this time for a Vulvenum. Yep, Lava Hound coming up the left hand side. Minion probably going to connect, not really do too much on the left hand side. Inferno Dragon coming out from Pedro though. An aggressive balloon coming on the right hand side. There will be the Tombstone this time to defend. And on the left hand side, well, look, it's pretty it's pretty good, honestly. The Mega Minion doing the, the, the work. Minion Horde taking out the Bloon on the right hand side. Bloon damage getting on top of the tower though. So still doing a bit of damage there. Yeah, but look, look at the Elixir right now. Vulvenum leading by three already. That's a huge amount of Elixir to be honest with you. He could get that Lava Hound push coming again. I think he's probably cycled through to it now though. For another Lava Hound push. Maybe, maybe one card away. I don't think Vulvenum is playing a Balloon. I think he's playing a Miner. Looks like a Miner. Or yeah, nothing at all. Yeah. I mean, he might have a bit more control of this, maybe with the miner rather than the balloon. If he has, yeah, I think so. Yep. And you know, he can. Oh no, okay, oh, he's yeah, playing a balloon. Coming no, right. the right hand side. Minions coming just behind there as well. Valkyrie going down, but I think it's going to get taken down pretty fast by those minions and Zap going down the balloon. So it allows it to get no connection to the tower except from the bomb damage. 
Okay, now we are in double elixir time. And Pedro is going to go with the Lava Hound. Lava Hound. Lava Hound. Yes, Lava. indeed. <laughs> in, the, in the back. Inferno Dragon connecting onto it, though, so I think it's going to go down pretty fast. Mega Minion helping out the Lava Hound. Mm. Don't know. Is it going to take down Inferno? Does actually manage to take the Inferno Dragon down there in the end? Looks <laughs> pretty good. He's going to try to force on the left hand side with the balloon. It's not going to work for Vulvenum. No, he hasn't got a connection at all. Neither of these players are getting any connections in with the balloon, but the balloon damage with the bomb might be enough just to pull one player ahead. They're both running pretty similar decks, except for obviously Pedro's got the Inferno Dragon, he's got the Valk, and hasn't got really Minion Horde in it either, so. And now uh, Vulvin, I'm trying to push on the left hand side with the Lava Hound. We do have but the Lava Hound bomb. Oh, it does connect to the tower, Mega Minion going off to the Tombstone. Tombstone is here for Vulvin, so he's going to be able to. Earn some time. That's going to be a close one. To connect. Oh, it's so close. Uh, that's not uh, going to be Right hand tower foot. going down for Pedro. So really well played. Pedro taking that right hand tower down. We haven't actually got. We haven't got. We have actually got minor banned at the moment. So we're probably not going to see any miners in yeah, any right. of these decks. To be honest <laughs> with you. So that's right. But um, yeah, that was quite surprising. The the final push. Uh, Vulvin, I'm trying to be more aggressive. You know, he was playing at the bridge, trying to get some damage onto the tower. Yep. But in the end, that balloon from Pedro just at the very right time. Yep, definitely. I think the Inferno Dragon was the big difference there, don't you think? Taking that Lava Hound down really fast, I think, from Pedro, and that's maybe even why he won the game maybe in the end. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Inferno Dragon's such a huge card, to be honest with you, especially it just takes down any tanks. It's so hard to kill it as well. I don't know if it's going to get an HP nerf at some point. What do you think? Do you think it should be nerfed a little bit, or you it's think they should hard leave to it say. as is? It's very hard to say, because, I mean, it's it's such a good card, but also it has some very, very strong weakness. Yeah, it's definitely. It's strong weakness, you know what I yeah. mean. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. A couple skeletons could stop it from taking out your tower, so one elixir skeletons. Or even a sap, you know, when, when you're relying on the Inferno Dragon and there is a sap, like, what do you do? Yeah. So... If you, I mean, it was really um, not really played at the beginning yeah. you know, because it's a really, h it's really hard to figure out how to play it. So I think with an, if it gets a, even a slight nerf, I think we, we might see it like yeah. way less. Taken out the meta completely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. so we're going to the next game now. We got Galactic Tusk versus Leko. We have Rage Band. When have I ever seen Rage Band? I think that's uh, I don't know. You know, some player. So they just ban a card because they don't really want to. They, they want to be able to play everything, basically. So, yeah. I think that's just. Uh, I mean, he could have banned nothing, but he chose to ban a raid spell. Yeah, I've had a few players not banning uh, cards in Sierra Nations, to be honest with you. Yeah, I've seen that. That's why I'm surprised there is a raid spell that is banned. <laughs> he, he could have chosen not to ban anything. Maybe yep. he didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't like coming against rage. You never know. <laughs> not something I see very often. Okay. Now, for now, it's very important for uh, Leko to uh, win this game. Otherwise, it, there is going to be 3-0 for yep, Venezuela. Yep, yeah, and only take one more match from trainer Luis to actually take it for Venezuela. So Leko really needs to do everything in his power to win this best of three. They need to come back in this. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to get taken down so fast. Yeah, and so Leko is going to try to take the first game with the Lavaloon again. It does look like Galactus pulls slightly ahead though, I mean 1800 HP left in the left on tower for, uh, for Leko at the moment, so definitely taking a little bit of damage there. But I think Leko is going to have the advantage in double el elixir time with the Lavaloon push on the left hand side, counter attacking from, uh, you know, Galactus pushes with I the Graveyard. I feel it's going to be quite hard for him to get through, I mean we've got Ice Wizard there, we've got Inferno Dragon, we've also got Tornado as well, Electro Wizard, so much anti-air to just slow down this push. Well maybe, okay no, I was like Fireball maybe he's Zap playing... Going down. I was like, maybe he's playing the um, the lightning, and I was like, that could make the difference. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he did get a really good fireball off there. You saw the fireball going on top of the ledge wizard plus the the ice wizard with the zap as well, completely shutting it down again. A little bit of damage on that left hand side. Another lava hound coming out the back for Leko. And there is a good push here on the left hand side for Leko. But as you said, there are so much things to defend uh, air. Definitely. I think just with the tornado alone. It just helps so, so much. He tries to actually fireball the Inferno Dragon, zaps it as well. I mean, it's still pretty decent HP there. Using the clone type to pull the Lava Hound back there. Still maybe get some damage off here, though. Mega one, Minion. No, no, not even one even, swing. No, really good defensive poison there coming out for Galactic as well. And he's trying to pressure on the right-hand side with the Ghost, yeah. forcing to defend. I'm not sure the guards were really good here. <laughs> I don't think so either, but I mean, it's only going to it's it's take a log to take them down, but Electro Wizard all the wizards going down defensively here. 
There is so much here for Galactus to stop that push. Hold on. Hold on. The Mega Minion is onto the tower. It is onto the tower with the... Oh, with the pups so and on the right-hand side. Tornado coming back as well. That was too late. Well played. Leko taking the first game for Montenegro. Really well played there. What was that? I was expecting a tornado for uh, Galactus. I was expecting, you know, same move as pr as previously. He the tornado yeah. to make his uh, Inferno Dragon live, take out everything. That was great. No, he tried to go on the right-hand side. Yep. I don't know why he did that, but he did manage to actually lose his tower in the yeah. end because of that. I mean, it's maybe a little bit of a misplay there. Maybe he put down well, his clone a little bit too late. That's exactly what we were saying. Like, he had to make a decision between either he, he was defending or he was trying to take the... the right hand side tower yep. he had to make the decision this time it was the wrong one yeah i mean the tower was full on the right hand side as well royal ghost was placed down and did absolutely nothing yeah on the right hand side at all so nothing done there but i don't know that was really risky like that was such a big push on the left hand side with the mega minion and the lava hound yeah i, I mean, don't you know do why not he... want to leave that mega minion alone it can do so much damage yeah. especially even if it's half hp because the two or three swings off it can take your tower down so much it just does so much damage mega minion yeah, maybe Venezuela is starting to feel a bit too confident, yeah. and Leko is really uh, decided to take that battle, that next battle for Montenegro to come back yep. in the game. So just cycling through the start here, as per usual from both players, Galactic is cycling, nothing coming up from Leko so far. Okay, so Galactic, oh, I think he's playing an Expo. Yeah, it looks Might like an, an Expo deck, I mean, he's got the cycle. He's got the archers and the skeletons with the log. That would explain why he banned the uh, the golem. Yeah, I mean, he, I guess you would want to ban golem or giant, to be honest with you. And I think Leko is playing against the lava loon, which is not necessarily good news. No, I don't think so. I think Expo does deal with um, lava pretty well, especially with that Tesla defensively in the middle. There is one case where the Lavaloon can win, and I mean one way the Lavaloon can win against an Expo. It's if he manages to take a tower, or almost take a tower, if Leko manages to take a tower at the very beginning of the game, before double elixir time, which doesn't seem to be the case right now. Yeah. I mean, you want to wait, I guess, the double elixir with that Expo, try outcycle your opponent, get some damage off. And then it's just so defensive, I mean, you can just even cycle through to your Tesla constantly to get some damage done. But we see an offensive Expo on the right-hand side, and Balloon going to be able to take it down fairly easily, I think, here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty well played here for Leko. He was yep. expecting that, you know, that Expo, he knew what was coming, and he perfectly dealt with it. Leaving that, the Zap go down there to stop it from getting to the tower. Okay, Mega Minion on the right-hand side will be able to get a swing. Does actually manage to get a swing off in the end. So we have the archers split up here. So Tombstone actually coming up the right hand side um, for Leko at the moment. Expo coming down offensively on the right hand side. I think it's going to get cleared up again. We've got Mega Man coming forward and that's going to be able to clear up this Expo on the right hand side. So we got push again from Leko right now, right hand side, trying to build up here a push. Okay, level hound on the right hand side. We've got uh, the guards to support it. Minions. Okay, uh, we've got the mega minion behind the level hound on the left hand side. Licker is trying to split push here. Go on the left hand side. Try to, to get that balloon onto the tower. That will be the fireball. The balloon is going to get one hit onto the tower. Maybe a second one. Maybe. Oh no, the zap was here for Licker, but he it was not enough, unfortunately. So it's just, yeah, just a little bit of a, well, that was a really good zap there, not allowing that damage to the tower that could have cost them the game. And the Expo is here, and it's onto the tower, it's connecting. It has made a good connection, but the zap going down as well. Trying to take it down with spell ah. damage, but it's still pretty full. Fireball forced down on the right-hand side. Okay, this is going to be extremely close. What, what Lego did was pretty good. Honestly, um, trying to get that balloon on the left-hand side, split pushing. That was really, really good, but unfortunately, the zap in the end didn't manage to, you know, earn in enough time for the balloon to hit a second time. Yeah, definitely. He might be able to get the balloon through here, though. I mean, he's... Nope. Now only the bomb. Bomb damage, yep. Does finish off the archers and the mega minion, but definitely not going to be enough. Fireball plus a log going down the right-hand side, and Galactic taking the game. 
Well played here. That was, re I mean, Lekud really gave everything he could. Like, he really tried everything. Uh, he reacted well with the balloon on the right hand yeah, side. Yeah, definitely. Then it was so close there. I mean, it, if that actually got a connection, that could have definitely taken the match. That zap was a really I think, well placed there. Honestly, I think the balloon was like. Uh, one one hit from the tower to uh, get the uh, the bo I mean the um, the hit onto the, <laughs> hit tower. Onto the tower. But the <laughs> thing is, the zap came like a bit too late. Yeah. I think the zap would have been you know it would have been able to get that balloon to have a, a second yeah. hit, but yeah, it was definitely. just too late. But just didn't get that balloon in there. That it, just things like that, even just milliseconds can cost you the game. So that was a millisecond, really. That was literally a millisecond. <laughs> that was that was yeah, that was literally a millisecond. But hey, crazy. it's not the end. Yet. Yep, not yet. I mean, Lakehood. it's 1-1 so at the moment, so Montenegro could actually come back in this, but we're going to have to they will. wait and see how they play. Well, yeah, going to make know. it. They might be able to sweep it back, but let's uh, see. I'm telling you, I'm telling you today, like right now, look at me. Lekko is going to win the next battle, and they're going to come sure? back in the game. Are you sure? I am I sure. I mean, it's still going to be one more match after this, so they still have a chance, even if they lose this match. But look, still another match. it's going to be Torin after... You think Torin's going to be able to take Montenegro. on Trainer Luis, though? I mean, Trainer Luis is such a strong player. I'm telling you, Montenegro is going coming back in this game. We will see. <laughs> All right, so we've got a brute spam on the right hand side. It's connecting. Oh no, it's connecting onto the uh, the uh, tombstone. We didn't even ta you know, uh, we didn't even have the time to see it. Okay, Leather Hound on the left hand side. Fireball coming up on top of all the zappies, so getting all them there. Is this Lava Inferno Dragon going to go down to the pups? Probably not. We still got a healthy Inferno Dragon pushing up the left hand side, so maybe be able to back this up with something galactic. But I mean, Leko just looks so behind right now in 1670 HP left in his tower. Hey, he can make it, I believe. It will be the balloon. Mm, going oh. into the witch, though. Hold on, is the, this the witch? Gonna, mm, I don't know if the witch has got enough damage to take this balloon down so one connection could get a second connection no, does not in the end just the bomb but damage still. but yeah i mean this take it's equalized the tower is a little bit here we got 1400 hp left on galactic tower now which still coming forward there and Mega Man, you're gonna be able to clean it up i'm really surprised about that witch in this deck yeah like, why def i'm not even too sure <laughs> why? to be honest i mean i guess it could counter a lot of decks but lava hound maybe not one it doesn't do quite enough damage to take it down I think Night Witch maybe would Night Witch be a good place? Maybe not. I don't really see a lot of Night Witches in these uh, bridge band decks. That's really surprising. I think I saw Night Witch actually with a Night Witch in yesterday's match actually um, in a bridge band deck, and I think it actually won overall. Well, well, we're gonna see that <laughs> in just <laughs> well, a moment. We'll see. That was Night Witch instead. So we do have the balloon coming up again. We have the Night Witch going down Inferno Dragon. Connecting onto the minions, so the balloon is going to get connected. It's going to, yeah, it is going to yeah, get. Oh, it looks like mo you, you actually predicted it perfectly. Montenegro are definitely coming back. Hold on, right now there is a push on the left hand side. This mm. could be it. Yeah, we'll see, I mean, we got the two oh, down that there. Fireball. fireball. Yep. Just not. The guards are here. Not enough pressure. And We've got Zappies down though. They may be able oh, to tank the dragon. Right Inferno dragon <laughs> connected onto the tower, takes it down. Well played, Galactic. It's he made it. He, he made it after all. It off the end. But I mean, there's only 103 HP left on his tower, so it's only going to take one more fireball. Being the fireball going down to Leko on the right hand side. Royal goes still in there, and the Zappies are stopping the main crown tower from pretty much doing anything to the, to the Royal Ghost. Oh, and now Leko is under pressure. He tried to defend, but he couldn't defend it's that push on the left hand side. Here. Such a shame. Yeah, 875 HP now, so it's not good. I mean, he got that really good pressure with the balloon on the left hand side. Maybe even overcommitted a little bit and then got himself a counter push, but this is not looking too good. Galactic is looking pretty strong here, but you never know. There may be a lava hound push, but I think there's just too much pressure. Yeah, there is so much only. pressure for Leko. He cannot deal with this. I'm telling you, there is the Ice Golem, there is the Witch, there Fireball is going the down. Inferno Dragon, the Ghost is here. Oh, guards, well placed guards. And Stopping the Royal Ghost from actually making his way over to the tower. Liko is trying everything in his power to stop that Zap push. Even going down to stop the Inferno Dragon, so there's just yeah, so much elixir going down. Inferno Dragon going up the right hand lane straight into a Lava Hound, though. He needs to get some pressure here, Liko, otherwise, it's Bridge Bam. It's going to take him out. And uh, Galactus going with an early good game. But 
But still, Liquid is able to defend. And hold on, there might be there might be a comeback here once again. Yeah, a little bit more damage to this tower, though. I think maybe even at this point, uh, Galactic could even cycle through his fireballs a little bit. Balloon, fireball, that's not fireball. bad. Yeah, Inferno Dragon connecting to the Is balloon. that maybe? No. No, no drop uh, in the tower. Again, slightly I'm too late. I mean, I'm pretty surprised here. We got Witch in this bridge band deck, and it's actually winning, so. Yeah. Pretty surprised. It is. Yeah, I'm gonna get a connection off here. Yeah, there will be the ghost, and no, there is way too much right now. Fireball going down right HP. Like 40 HP. Yeah, one zap takes the game for Galactic. So we are sweeping at the moment for Venezuela. So Venezuela playing really well right now. And well, I did not predict well. <laughs> nope, Montenegro. They did look strong at the start of that game, though. Almost taking that tower down the left hand side, but just not managing to pull off. But I think yeah. sometimes with bridge spam, it's just like if you overcommit on one side, your opponent goes for the complete opposite side. You got nothing to clear it up. So you well, you shouldn't go all in. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. Definitely. But yeah, that's a shame. Really, I really thought Lego had it. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah, he was not able to. Yeah, have a huge advantage, definitely. But just couldn't manage to actually pull it off in the end. And now, honestly, it's going to be so difficult for Montenegro to come back in the game. We've yep. seen this situation many times before, like with a 3-0, 3-1, 4-0, 4-0, one country. And it's very... I've seen it maybe once, one country able to come, I, in, I have to seen come it back. I as well, definitely. I've casted many CR nations and some countries, they go down 3-0 and then they come back. They sweep the last match. But yeah, but... It's really rare that they win in the end. You know, yeah, some, some country come back in a 3-3 and there is a champions match and that's great, but... You know, pulling that victory after a 3-0 or a 3-1, it's very, very difficult. And I don't know, I think Mon Montenegro can do it, but that's yep. going to be so hard. Is Torin going to be able to take it back from Montenegro? We've got Trainer Louise as his opponent right now, so... Yeah, I believe so. Well, you know, we, we talked about the players at the beginning. We we mentioned Torin, we mentioned Sasa, and we mentioned Gormeister. You know, they're yep. like, to me, they're the three biggest player in Montenegro. So they can completely come back 3-3. They three, three. definitely come back. I mean, they maybe even set it up like this. They maybe want to do this, lose the first three matches, and then just sweep them in the end. Yeah, and I think they, they can make it. That's a good strategy. You know, Venezuela are now feeling confident. They're like, yeah, we're going to win another best of three, and we're going to yeah. go to uh, to the next round. But hey, hold on. Montenegro is still here. <laughs> they are still here. You never know. They might be able to take it back. They're three strongest players potentially coming up next and going to be able to maybe take this back. We're going to have to wait and see, but we're getting into the game now. We have... Oh, that's the replay. Oh, this is the replay. Sorry, we have Pedro versus Bull, Bull Nen and Venom. Bull Venom, yeah. And we can see on the right-hand side the balloon that will connect. We'll have the time to connect. And on the left-hand side, look, Bull Venom is trying everything to get that balloon, but the, the balloon on the right was just closer to the tower. Way and closer to the tower. Despite the tombstone that was there. Yep. That was yeah, not enough I mean, time. I mean, it managed to take it out, but those pups just tanked for that balloon yeah. for so long. The balloon managing to actually get the connection. I think the Mega Minion was there as well. Th I it think didn't well, do really much to help. Defend. I think that was, was a question of cycle. Yep. You know, like, uh, Vulvenum had to go on the left-hand side. Uh, he had to he had to go with the Mega Minion and then the balloon, whereas um, uh, Pedro was able to put the balloon behind the Lava Hound without the Mega Minion. Yep. Yep. Here we have another replay. Galactus versus Leco. It's the balloon. Not managing to actually connect to the tower in the end, and the bomb damage only done there. So, quite a big counter push, I guess, here. Especially, yeah, this tower is still pretty low on the right hand side. Definitely looks like uh, Galactic had yeah. this game here. And as as we said, like the game was already played. Now, on that defense on the left hand side, that was that was it. Yep, it's gone. And Zap. yeah, he finished the game. Well played, Galactic. We should be getting into the next game pretty soon. Trainer Louise coming up next versus Tottenham. Yep. I really want to see if Torian is going to play his deck. Yeah, giant definitely. skeleton deck giant with the skeleton balloon and deck. That would be so good. I never see giant skeleton in CR Nations, to be honest. With you. I, yeah. don't think, I don't think I've seen it in the matches I've cast. Maybe you have, but I, I think well, I've seen I have, have Torian. I have seen yeah. Torian. Has I he think played it? Hmm? Has yeah. He played he, well, he's played the giant skeleton so many times. Has like, he? Yeah. Almost every time. There is be one banned from Trader Louise. Well, it might be. Yeah, it might be. I mean, it, he knows it's one of his. I guess maybe his favorite cards. I guess it will be a very smart play, to be honest. Yeah. Because, like, he, I mean, Torin is so good with this deck, with the yeah. Giant Skeleton deck. Like, he is incredibly good. And the deck is really good as well. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really played with it much. I might try it later on tonight. I tried, mate. Some grand challenges. I tried it myself. And I was, I was amazed. Really, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was amazed. I saw the deck. I was like, how is this going? I mean, how 
How can it even work? Like, yeah. but it, it, it does work. It. Does it have a spell in there? I don't think does it. I think there is a zap. There's that's a zap. It. There's yeah, no big spell. Yeah. There, I know. It's, there's it's a tornado. Kind of tornado. A different deck as well. It has a tells in it as well. I just feel it's it's just a little, it's, it's, it's definitely it's just a merge of decks all together with giant skeleton. Um, but, but again, we're gonna have to wait and see what he plays. I mean, he's been definitely playing some other decks as well. Not just that one probably, but with the fireball and the minion horde. And the banned. giant skeleton is not banned from nope. Trainer Luis. But do you think Giant Skeleton is a good card to ban? Well, uh, against Torin, yes it is. Really, because, yeah, Torin, well, it's its main deck, and I'm sure, like, 100%, he's playing it uh, right, right now. now yeah. We're gonna see it, We're that's sure. It. I'm, like, 100% sure. And uh, he doesn't want to make any mistake. I'm not gonna lie, Torin, in his deck, he doesn't have many options to start the game. Like, yeah. you really need to always wait for the other player it's to... It's like, a counter deck opposed to yeah. an aggressive deck. Yeah, okay, that's it. Baby Dragon, Baby that's Dragon. the deck. That, that is the signal that it, we do have the Giant Skeleton deck. So again, both players just cycling through. We got Baby Dragon coming up at the right-hand side. And Miner going down, actually going to try and get that Electro Wizard. But Valt will be the well placed from Trainer Luis. Well, that's pretty good. The Baby Dragon uh, is able to get both troops at the same time. That's Still value. huge pressure coming on the right-hand side. Still got Valt. We've got the Graveyard coming down. Let's see if he's going to be able to defend this. Goblin's coming down for Tordum. And no Alex for Trainer Louis, so he's going to have to let that graveyard, well, just do nothing. That was pretty much just a free graveyard. And look at this, the counter-attack, as we said, with the blue on the right-hand side. Still don't see that giant skeleton yet. I want to see that giant skeleton. And the zap is here. The balloon is going to connect. It does get quite a bit of damage. The towers are really well played from Todd in here. Again, Montenegro could come back in this. Yeah, and the tornado was way too late here for Trainer Louis. Miner going down, actually getting a connection onto the tower as well. Valk placing the back instead of the side. So again, a little bit more chip damage done. And look at Torin dominating with this deck. I tell you, this deck is incredible. I'm actually really surprised, to be honest with you. We have Trainer Louise running the Splash Yard deck pretty much. I think he's running a slightly different version of it, though. He's got the Valk in it instead of maybe potentially the Bowler, I think. You would normally yeah. see his deck with the Bowler. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, oh, okay, there is a bell. But he has. I, I don't think Valk is the Valk in this deck. I don't, Not I, sure. I, I don't think the one I'm playing at the moment, Dan, anyway, has that in it. But Valk's still a really strong card at the moment. Huge tank, and huge AoE damage. So definitely probably fits pretty well in the Splasher deck. And look at this giant skeleton on the right hand side. It will be uh, dying to the Inferno Dragon. But here, look at the bomb. Yo, is it going to be? He's Plus the tornado, yeah, that's it. Plus Nothing's the baby left. dragon. Well played. Nothing's left. That and now. Insane place to be honest with you. That was insane trade for just a giant skeleton tornado. I just get loads of damage on the tower. Let's see if he defends this giant skeleton at the bridge now. Yeah, so no way they're getting past that giant skeleton. Yeah, so the tower can target the uh, graveyard. That was well played here for Torin. And then the bomb is here, so nothing's gonna go yep. through. The baby dragon just AoEs everything down, just finishing everything off. Thing is, problem of this deck of Torin, he doesn't have any big spell, so he cannot he cannot finish up that tower. Yeah. He needs to get I a mean, balloon it's, it's or a miner or something. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be four zaps before he even gets that tower down, I think. Doesn't even need a tornado here. The bomb is going to do the job by itself. It just clears up so well, though. We got main crime tower activated for trainer Logan. Yeah, that stuff. was it. He knew it. Yep. Miner zap going down the right hand side. Cleaning and look up at this tournament. deck. <laughs> I know, it's, it's crazy. It hasn't even got a spell on it. There's no point in banning Fireball versus. Um, Versus Tordin because he doesn't even run a big spell on his deck. I think, well, Trainer Lewis um, or the coach of Venezuela, they, they did not study. They yeah, did not study straight, Montenegro. Tordin. I think yep. maybe they underestimated them and they yep. thought it would be easy enough not to study the players. Yep. I, that was a mistake because against Tordin, if I think, t honestly, if you know what Tordin is going to play, if you know he's going to play this deck, you can very easily ban a card. He's going to play it in the second match though. Yes, he will. He will. Uh, he's he just going to play it all the way through. Yeah, except if he loses. Except if he loses. Yeah, so you're just gonna but keep going. Yeah. I guess there's no point switching a deck if you know what to do with it. You know you're gonna win with the deck, and you know your opponent is not gonna be able to deal with the deck. You might as and well honestly, stay with it. If you're Trainer Luis, what do you play against this? I like, do you have an idea? Like right now? Uh, no, you just don't know. <laughs> I think just not overcommitting. To be honest, although one lane. Torin oh, switched. Yeah, he's he looks like Pekka minor control potentially. But yeah. We don't know yet. Yeah, it seems to be this, and Trainer Louis going with the zap bait, uh, log bait. Log bait as well. But, um, I don't know, I think Trainer Louis might have the advantage here. It doesn't look like Torrent actually does have the log, so it's going to be a lot harder for him to stop that. Great miner here, trying to tank for those bats. Oh, yes. Princess going to be able to come down the right hand lane, finishing off the push on the left hand side, though. Okay, now Torrent is sitting 
He's just waiting for uh, Trent Lewis to be aggressive so he quite can control. Of, quite a lot of damage on the right hand side. I mean, he just used the bandit to clear that up. And actually, did took exactly the same on the right hand, left hand side as he did on the right hand side. Yeah, same offense, same defense. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but Trent Lewis, I'm not too sure he's switching lanes a little bit here. Is that a good idea or is it best staying on the lane with the log bit? I guess maybe switching up. He had the princess on the right hand side, so. I think for now it's fine, you know, the, the towers are, you know, almost untouched, yeah. so it's fine. A big P.E.K.K.A coming down the left hand side for Tarden right now, so trying to just maybe build up a push on the left hand side. I feel like sometimes P.E.K.K.A is really easy to deal with, you can kite it away with the goblins, maybe the Tals is going to take it down pretty fast, but we have the goblins going down again on the right hand side, a lead wizard well placed getting two of the goblins. Not in time though. Nope, so getting a bit of chip damage done, but... I mean, if you place that Electro Wizard, you can actually get all the goblins. You just need to have a really good timing on it. Yeah. But Pekka making this way over to the tower, taking out the Telsa pretty fast. Ice Spirit luring the Pekka um, over just a little bit more. On the right hand side, the Electro Wizard was there, and, and, and he, he. Yeah. I can't even see <laughs> I mean, it. I 1700 HP left on the right hand what? tower now, so. Mm, it's looking actually not too bad for Torrin at the moment. The barrel is here once again, getting some damage once again. I mean, he can't really deal with it really well. He just needs to put units down. He's got nothing solid in his deck to 100% take out the Goblin Barrel without overcommitting on The Pega is here on the right-hand side. Torin is going to try to do a big push on the right and on the left. Probably a good idea. I mean, 1,700 HP left on the tower, but the Telsa is still sitting in the middle there. Pretty healthy at the moment. And that was Rocket coming out from Trainer Louise as well, so cleaning up the Inferno Dragon. Oh, that, that was well defended though for Trainer Luis. He yeah, didn't take definitely. any damage. Although, I mean, he, he didn't went through with his push on the left hand side. And now he's switching lane. That's quite surprising to be honest. Yep, going back to the left hand side again. Probably just trying to cause pressure both lanes. He knows that Torrin needs to sometimes overcommit to get those uh, goblins down. And the miner tipping with the tower. Oh, good poison really here for Torrin. Well poison. Got the princess, and the bat! The Look at that bat on the tower dealing One so bat. much damage. That happens all the time to me. I kill most of the bats, I miss that one bat with that zap. I sued the game because of that. And again, the Electro Wizard was not in time. It wasn't on time that thing. But even if he does get it at the right time, it still gets one hit off, I'm sure, from every single goblin. The Electro yeah. Wizard connecting to the tower on the right hand side, getting a little bit more damage done for Corrin right now. It's actually loads of damage on the left hand side, though. I mean, his tower's getting lower and lower from Trainer Louise, so. But this oh, the bandit! Barrel. Oh, no, he's not going to dash, and oh, the barrel is not defended on the right hand side. Oh, the tower going down, I think, for Oh, uh, 35 left HP! Right side. Oh, aggressive. Oh, uh, no. But yeah, Trainer Will Louise actually managing to pull that match off in the end, so really well played from Trainer Louise. Did look like Tarden was coming back there, he but was. he did pull off then. But I think just because he didn't have the log, that was the problem. If he had the log in his deck, he would have been able to deal with that so much better, but he had to use just units, Electro Wizards, timed Electro Wizards, to try yeah. and take that Goblin Barrel. And down. even, as we said, you know, the Electro Wizard, if it was placed on time, yep. maybe, you know, it could have been a few hundred damage difference. Yeah, I mean, there was 500 HP there. If he yeah. got the Electro Wizard down at the right time, both times, he probably would have pulled it off there, potentially, yeah. just because that little bit of extra tip damage. You saw the Miner going up the left hand side as well getting a little bit more damage in so yeah and now well now that's going to be a match point here for um for venezuela yep. they c if they win the next battle if trenla luis wins the next battle they're going to win this match against montenegro and montenegro will be out of the competition yep. and look at this giant skeleton again <laughs> giant skeleton again going back to what he knows best a well played miner there looting the bulk back with the telsa definitely going to be able to take down this giant skeleton here on the left hand side and Trenor Lewis is going to play that log bait again. So I, uh, I believe he believes the log bait can counter the uh, the deck of Torin. Potentially, I mean, you don't have to build anything too much up at the bridge to get your goblin barrel down. So just maybe a little bit of a tank for the bulk, but we have an aggressive uh, oh, tornado here. Tornado to the main crown tower, so that's going to help Torin, I think, a lot later on in this game. Oh, and the Tesla on the right hand side, and oh, and the bomb is going to take the princess. So much value on the right hand so side for the value. balloon. And look on the left hand side, the baby dragon. It does some damage to the tower. 1500 HP. I mean, baby dragon seems to be really strong in this deck. Just manages just to finish off that little bit of HP. Because, I mean, the giant skeleton doesn't actually take down some units. Yeah. Baby dragon and just I, managed to finish it off. I love the, the fact that when you look at the deck, uh, you know, on, on, on the paper, I mean, on the phone, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you see the baby dragon, you're like, why is it in the deck? And then yeah. when you see him play the deck, you're like, it makes sense. Yep. 
he just obviously had so much practice with it. It does look like a lower arena deck, but I mean, he is dominating oh, the this princess. tournament so far. Princess, princess on the tower. Did lock onto the tower, so got quite a lot of damage off there. I mean, it's down to 1,000 HP now. Pavilion on the left-hand side, the barrel will not be dealt with. And the, oh, look at look at this! The giant, uh, the balloon, is going to go to onto the tower. There is nothing to defend. The princess will be too late and not enough. And the balloon is going to get that connection. Yep. Not and much kill the princess as well. Well, take out the princess and lower the tower down just a little bit more. So I get, I mean, Torin has got really good control here. But we got the miner going down as well. Left hand side going to finish off the tower. Goblins put down just a little bit late there. Didn't manage to quite clear up the miner. Oh, uh, great tornado here Lovely. with the baby that, dragon. That was a really nice tornado. He didn't even no take damage. one damage. No, that was that was really surprising to be honest with you. I thought at least maybe one of the goblins would get some sort of chip damage done. But we got to remember, Trainer Louise does have a rocket in his deck, so he could actually cycle down that left hand side fairly easily. But he is going for the goblin barrel, getting a little bit damage done. Uh, that's not enough for the rocket. That is rocket, isn't it? I thought that was uh, rocket leaping. Uh, no. Three HP of a difference. Damn. Uh, it was really close, but we got the so coming up the right hand side. He has to put the log, but then yep. the balloon is on the right hand side. It's gonna connect. There is too much pressure here for Torin. He's gonna make it. The balloon connecting onto the tower. The miner as well. And one last, yes, one last hit from the balloon, and that's it with the bomb. That's crazy. I mean, Torin taking that match with Giant Skeleton. He did actually switch up decks there, but he went back to what he knew. What he could play the best to be honest and and I think it's just what you should do I've got decks that I always go back to and always like to play he's incredible yeah he is incredible with this deck and the deck itself is incredible really yep. I, I made uh, I made a video on this and he needs to try and be a bit more diverse with his decks or do you think he should just stick with that deck he need well he, if he if he wants to play competitively uh, he needs to have several decks if he needs to otherwise well if you know he's gonna play giant skeleton just either ban, ban it or you yep. take a counter deck Definitely. So he but needs what, to have several decks. Counter Giant Skeleton. It's hard to say. It is. I mean, hard it's, to say. it's a really defensive card. You're never going to use it aggressively, and that balloon is still really strong as well. So it's so really well played again. So we're going to be we're going to be hopping to the next match very soon. It's going to yep. be Fusco versus Sasa. Fusco versus Sasa. So That's Sasa again, a really strong player. The same with Fusco. But is Montenegro going to be able to take this back? I think I might be saying something something wrong here. I think Sasa was uh, in a CRL combine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he if he found a team or not. But he is still a very very good player for Montenegro. I mean, and Fusco, to get 20 wins, you have to be yeah. a really good player. You have to be training. You have to know your deck inside out. So and then Fusco is a CRL player as well. Yeah, definitely. You can see Fusco has got a crazy win ratio though, 80% favorite card being the graveyard we have um, Sasa with his giant deck only 50% from him though Not quite yeah good. but you never know I mean we don't really have the, the number of matches that he played so maybe Sasa lost you know one uh, yeah, a few maybe. games yeah but uh, still yeah the win rate of Fizgo is pretty impressive not gonna lie and uh, well I mean, maybe Sasa yeah he's been playing um, been playing a lot less games so his win rate does look bad but he could just be played four games whereas Fusco could have played a lot more potentially so we can't play off those win rates <laughs> and anyway Sasa needs to win his best of three otherwise yep. Montenegro is going to be out they don't have the right to, to make any mistake now they yep. need to uh, to take those uh, every single best of three they want to yep. go to the One champions more match yeah and that'll be it basically but you never know they could take it back I think Montenegro still a really strong team these last they players are. still really strong so you never know they could just sweep Venezuela back but Venezuela I don't know they haven't been beaten even yet so yeah that's true they are undefeated so far so well we're gonna see that right now that's what we got we have Lava Hound coming out for Fuse Go it seems to be quite a lot of the same decks inside the Lava Hound giant deck I think the only di different deck we've seen is actually from Tordon so far yeah indeed but still there, there is um, a flying machine here for Fuse Go that's you know, quite unusual and Sasa is going to take the right hand side tower very early in the game, only 40 seconds in the game. Quite impressive here. Fusco couldn't do anything against that. I mean, you, this, I don't know if this flying machine is going to be able to clear up the hunter. It's actually backing up this balloon as well, getting a connection onto the tower, getting loads of damage done. I feel like if you get that flying machine gets over the bridge, it's always going to get some shots on the tower. And Sasa is not going to try to defend that balloon. He knows he has nothing to defend. He sh I think he doesn't have the uh, the Mega Minion or the Hunter. Yep, he used the Mega Minion and the Hunter. Went down pretty early at the start, but we're coming in here with a push with the Giant. We've got guards coming behind there as well. 
That's pretty well played, I believe, from uh, from Sasa. He didn't try to do anything crazy. He knew what was happening. He was like, okay, I'm going to lose my tower. Now let's try to do a push on the left-hand side. Didn't work out, but that was well, well yeah. played. Definitely. I mean, if you use your, I don't know, these, like, cycle through too much elixir, try to get back to your anti-air, you're just overcommitting just maybe a little bit there, and you don't want to be pushing up the right-hand side where you're going onto the main crown tower as well. I think Fuzgo should go for uh, for the main tower. Yeah, yeah, potentially. I think. I think. I, I, think. Mo I think mostly I've seen that as well. Just going for three crowns. You might go for a counter to Sasa if Sasa decides to push off the left hand side. Yeah, that's what. Yep. That's what he's gonna do. I think that's the right uh, the right choice here. Guards clearing up the tombstone though, so the giant potentially gonna get some swings off the tower here. For the poison. That's a really nice poison. Who do you guys who do you guys think are gonna win? Do you think Venezuela is gonna win or Montenegro? Hashtag CR playoffs. Yeah, you can you can tweet tweet to us. Tweet us uh, what you think is going to happen. Even if well right now Venezuela is pretty <laughs> they're looking pretty ahead. They're looking pretty ahead at the moment, but you never know. There's still potentially three more matches to go. And still, well, look at this. Sasa is uh, quite leading on the left-hand side. He, he he had a lot of damage, and he can put it off be before the the timer goes to zero. Still 1,100 HP less than Fusco's tower. So yeah, but look at this. The log he is here. The giant is going to be able to connect. The guards are on the tower as well. Loads of damage on the left-hand tower. But if he managed to actually clear this push-up, he has got a lava hound still at the main crown tower and decent. HP on his left hand tower. Not looking good for, uh, for Sasa here. Fireball going down. Ah, that's and it. That's, that's it. the well end. Played. Yep, three crowning in the end. The balloon damage. Is it going to be able to finish it off? Does actually manage to take in the end. So well played there from Fusego. Taking that match down really early on at the start against Sasa. Yeah, unfortunately, that was really close, honestly, because the left hand Stop side this. tower was not really high in terms of HP. and. Yep. I think he. I think in the end, Sasa panicked. He yeah. knew something will be coming at some point to his king's tower, so yep. he needed to to pressure. I, I think he tried to pressure too much. Yeah, he could have gone for the main crown tower himself, I guess, rather than going for that left hand I, now, tower. Honestly, I think that was a right choice to go to for the left hand side tower and I try to finish it off before yeah. the timer goes to zero, before going to overtime. Yep. I think that was a right choice. There's still that balloon, still a huge tank, stops everything backing up his units most of the yeah. time. And it's just a huge tank, I guess. He didn't use a lot of crown units there, but that tombstone, I think, made such a huge difference in the game. Those skeletons do so much damage. And, well, Sasa just gave a double <laughs> match point here for uh, for Fusco. He's going to be able to try to win this match for Venezuela twice. Twice. <laughs> And he's going to play for the first try. He's going to play Hog Rider. Hog Cycle, here we go. Yeah, first one we've seen today. Yeah, I, d I haven't seen any Hog Cycle. I saw a few of them yesterday, but today we haven't seen any so far. Okay, and that's going to be a giant witch for uh, for Sasa. Oh, good poison there. Yeah, nice poison. Get doesn't does actually manage to get the flying machine. I thought he actually missed the flying machine, but the flying machine going down to the poison. The same with the Mega Minion as well, actually. I think Sasa has to be quite aggressive here with his deck. I believe if yep. he wants to uh, to have a chance between, uh, I mean, against um, against the Hog Rider. But this Hog getting through so much. I mean, 1,200 HP now. But we still got a counter boost coming here with the bats. This oh, the mm. bats again! The bats on the tower. Does he? I don't he know if he has so a zap damage. in his deck. Does he have a zap? <laughs> I'm he not sure. Want to use it too early. I, I know. I think he has a log. The log, yeah. Uh, yeah. That would have done nothing <laughs> to those bats. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise he would have played the zap. Yep. That's for sure. I feel like some games though, it just depends that whether you have log or zap, it makes a huge difference in the game because you need log for log bait, you need zap for zap bait. So, yeah, indeed. If you don't have it, you're going to lose the game almost. But still pretty close here. 400 HP left in Fuse Ghost Tower. We've also got Sasa with 871 HP now. Yeah, that's going to be a close game, but Sasa needs to win it. Definitely. Yeah, by any mean. <laughs> I mean, he is looking pretty good right now, but another hog rushing forward here, Lumberjacks. We're going to see a counter push with the Lumberjack and the Giant just in front as well. Maybe a poison as well. No, he's in, no he, he shouldn't force it, to be honest. The Giant is going to connect. He's going to take the tower. Yep. And that's Doesn't it. Doesn't want to overcommit, I guess. I think the Mega Minions should be able to clean up the flying machine yeah, now as well, especially with the Rage up. Um, does that too. He has to go on the left-hand side. He has to pressure now. That's what, that, that's what he's doing. Yep, pressuring up the left-hand side, but hog rushing on the right-hand side. Mega Minion going down to clear up the flying machine. 
Is it going to be enough to stop the hog? It does actually enough to stop the hog from taking out the tower, so still needs to spend a little bit of elixir to take out that right hand tower. At the and very it, least, two uh, with the yep. log. Yep, log, Indeed. Yeah, log going down the right hand side. So having to force the log out, we still got witch push coming up the left hand side, though. I think that log would have helped him dramatically, I think, on the left hand side against that witch. But the poison going down on top of the tombstone flying machine and the mega minion. Huge straight there with that poison. And the giant is going to connect, getting one hit. Getting no, not a second one there. No, he gets one hit off there, not too much damage. So it looks like Hulk coming down the left hand side. Ah, that counter push. push. Still a huge push. I mean, we've got Flying Machine, we've got Mega Minion behind there. Bats are taking on the Flying Machine, though, so the Flying Machine not really going to get much done there. That is so well defended here for Sasa. Really well played. With only Definitely. the Bats trying to uh, to earn enough time to uh, deal with the Hog Rider. That was very well played in here, the Giants. Bats are so strong in this deck, though, I guess against Fusego because there's no zap there so the bats are going to be able to deal with any of this air I think right now. I think the poison here was a bit too uh maybe too a bit too uh, much yeah. Yeah too much. We still got a huge push coming we got a huge push coming left hand side the hog managing to actually connect to the tower. Yeah defensive miner is not what you want to do when you play a miner you really want to put it on onto the tower and not onto the hog rider. So now Sasa, we can see he is kind of struggling, and Fusco knows it, so he's going to try to pressure as much as he can. Fireball on top of the witch plus the tower as well, so just trying to get that extra a giant maybe. Damage. Yes, a yeah, giant, giant in, the middle. in the middle. Tombstone going down defensively, these skeletons just do so much damage. We haven't actually got the zap. Yeah, the zap is here a bit zap too late. Yep. The miner, the giant is onto the tower. That's going to be extremely close, and yes. He's going to be able to take the tower yeah, with. Looks like Sasa takes the game from Montenegro. So again, Montenegro could come back in this. We're going to have to wait and see Fuse go versus Mon uh, Sasa. They already saved two match points twice. They could have lost really on yeah. on that on one battle, and they managed to win it. You think they kept their strongest players till last? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think Sasa is going to do everything. I mean, he will anyway do everything in his power to win the, the next battle. Yeah. I think him. I think he will win. Yeah, it's really close I right now. It's one more right now, so you never know. Yeah, you never know. He might be able to come back. So, we'll but just I think Mont as I told you, for me, Montenegro is able. They they really can come back in this game. They really can put it off and and go to the champions match and everything can happen. It's extremely close to them yeah. for them because you know they they lose one battle, they're out. But yeah, they can make it. There is still huge pressure, and there must. I mean, if it was me, and I, if, that, if I know everything ro rode on me for that last match, I'd be trying as hard as I can. But there would still be a lot of pressure in there. Just even little misplays. One misplay can cost you the whole game. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's very risky for them, but you know they have no choice now. Yep. They're they're, they're they, here, and they, they need to. Do to it. <laughs> they need to win. That's it. Only thing they, 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 they to gotta get to do. Ten reef. They're gonna have to win these next yes, matches. Yes, indeed. Yeah, the final is going to be in Tenerife. That's yep. going to be Tenerife. epic. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be amazing, I think. Tenerife. It's not even... It's, so I think it's only, what, five euros for the tickets as well? Yes, it's five only five euros. euros. It's, it's very cheap. So it's so cheap going to Tenerife. So I definitely get on that. There's going to be some crazy matches, I think. That's going to be incredible. Everybody will be here. That's going to be crazy. Yep. I can't really? wait for Tenerife. We're both going to be there. Yes. And it's going to be awesome, I think. We love Tenerife. That's going to be on the 29th of July. Yep, 29th so of July. It's coming, you know. And you can also tweet us, as we said uh, not long ago, at yep. uh, hashtag uh, Sierra Nations uh, Playoff. And if you want to tag us as well, Sierra Nations Cup, that would be awesome. So I think we're getting into the next match now. We're coming into potentially the last matches. So Fuse Go versus Sasa again. All right. So what are they going to play for this potentially last match? Sasa needs to do something. He needs to win. Okay, and he's going to play a uh, Mega Minion in defense of that Hog Rider. Taking loads of swings there. I mean, tower Three. down at 1800 HP and we're at the start of the game. That's I not mean, looking good. He might have actually just taken that damage there so he could get his Lava Hound down and get a build up here. But anyway, that, that was a misplace. Normally, when you play the Mega Minion against the Hog Rider, it only gets two hits onto the tower. Yep. So that was a misplay here for Sasa. Very first play was but a misplay. Still, I mean, we still got a huge push coming up here. We got the Lava Hound down. And the flying machine. Now, do you think this flying machine is going to be able to deal with that lava hound before getting damaged? Yeah, but there is a balloon behind it, and the tombstone is here. Yeah, it's looking good here for Fusco. He's going to be able to uh, defend that, I believe. Still taking loads of damage to his tower. Oh, hold on, hold on. The balloon. There. Is the balloon going to get the connection? There is a mega down? minion. Mega minion going to be able to take it down. So. And still, he got so much damage onto the tower. I didn't think he would be able to do this. Fireball going good down fireball the left hand here. side as well, just finishing off the flying machine. 
Obviously, Fireball does one shot the flying machine from full HP. So, but Fusego is leading here in terms of Elixir, yep. which is pretty good for him. Not very good for Montenegro. <laughs> no, not good for them, but I mean, Fusego's tower is still down at 1200 HP, so you never know what's going to happen. And the Tombstone is already here for the Hog Rider, and there will be the Mega log Minion. As well. Really well played for that log. And not getting the connection in with that Hog that time, Minion's forced down as well. Yeah, that's, that's well played from Sasa here, because we can't really see it, but he placed the Minions early. He knew the log was coming. Yeah. yeah. So well played. That's a, that's a pre shot of, uh, of the log. It's a pre shot, pre shot. <laughs> So we have Lavaham going down the left hand side, Mega Minion coming forward as well, so still a huge push and this fragile flying machine is going to go down I think. Uh, he's going to force it with a balloon on the left hand side, the Mega Minion though will connect into the balloon and it will, and the balloon will not connect to the tower. Yep, so I guess that bomb damage though, Fireball going down to be able to clear up the flying machine. I think flying machine, if you've got Fireball on your deck, flying machine can be a weak card just because it can get one shot. Yeah, but it can also make a lot of value. Yeah, and it definitely. can, you know, it can be also, uh, you know, fireball bait. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the mega minion. If you fireball the flying machine, then the mega minion, you know, it can make so much value. Yeah. It can dominate in the end. So well, we have Hog rushing over to the tombstone, not getting any connections in here. So Sasa is still looking good in this game. I think that tombstone just deals with this Hog deck so well, though, because the tombstone, it's such a cheap card, and it deals with Hogs so well. Yes, indeed. Oh, Sasa is going to try to just put a zap to finish it off with so a fireball. fireball. And again, left hand side. that's the third match point they saved. That's incredible. And again, I told you, Montenegro is they coming are, they back. Are, they are coming back. It did look a little bit like Tarim was maybe going to lose that one match, but he did switch back to his normal deck and has pulled it back altogether. Montenegro, especially in this match as well, they're coming back really strong. Yeah, and now. even Leko. You know, Leko was like, he was about to win. Uh, you know, the first point for yeah, uh, for Montenegro, yeah, but unfortunately he lost, and so yeah. now Montenegro is kind of struggling, but still, they're, they're making they're the comeback. Back. I mean, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a sweep at the start from Venezuela, but you can see now Montenegro is coming back, but we got Ali versus Gormeister at the moment. Yeah, and Gormeister is also a very good player for Montenegro, yeah. so he, he can make it. He, I believe so. He can really make it. He could, yeah, he could definitely. I mean, we're looking at some of their win, their favorite win conditions here. We have Ali with his hog deck. We've got Gormeister with the graveyard deck. And yeah, again, Ali has a very good win rate. Yep. Uh, Gormeister is only at 50%, 50 which, which 50 is a good win rate. You know, it's yeah, okay. it's still a good win. But it depends how much matches he's played. I guess he has. Yeah. He has actually played 10 matches in the end, won 50% of them. So Ali does look slightly ahead with that win ratio right now. But again. Anything can happen in this matchup. Yeah, as we've seen just before, you know. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, definitely. I mean, they were looking really strong, Venezuela. But this seems to be, they just, Montenegro just seemed to be pulling back in the end. Maybe just a little bit too much pressure for Venezuela near the end here. But I'm not too sure. All they need is one match. They need one only match one best of three. Yep. And they already, uh, they lost three match points, you know, three times with only one battle, one win. Yeah. They could have won. But still, Montenegro is coming back, I'm they telling are. you. We'll see, we'll see. Let's see if Venezuela, I mean, again, Venezuela have not been beaten so far. Yeah. So we'll see if Montenegro is going to be able to That would be incredible. Yeah, that would be would incredible. Be, it would honestly be incredible. We, we might see Montenegro at Tenerife. We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah. And uh, we've seen that before, you know, like, well, especially for Turkey, United States, you know, they, they were confident in the match. Yeah. They were confident. Really they strong were good. teams, definitely. But like Venezuela, basically. And mm. I think they were a bit too confident. And yeah, they lost they, one match. Yep. And if you lose this match for Venezuela, well, that's the end. Yep. All right. So we've got the uh, Spear Goblins for Ali on the left-hand side. And the, and the gang. Gang coming down left-hand side. Getting a little bit damaged on with those Spear Goblins, though. Might be going down defensively, so well played, not taking as much damage with the goblins, but an offensive uh, minor on the left hand side. What kind of deck is this? Is this this mortar deck coming out from Ali? Seems to be a mortar deck. Yeah, we haven't seen the rascals just yet, but we might see them pretty soon. We might see a defensive mortar here. We do actually see the defensive mortar coming down from Ali, so that should be able to help deal with this giant. But doesn't giant kind of like counter mortar a little bit, or just depends how you play it, I guess? I don't really know. Yeah, I guess so. There is a witch also, which is pretty good, knowing that Ali is playing tons of uh, well of uh, small troops, yep. the goblins. But still, this, these rascals, the rascals are dealing with this pretty well. The giant not really getting any damage to the tower, and Ali has got loads of chip damage to the left hand side. Oh, the ghost here for Gormaster. All right. 
And this counter push here for uh, for Gormister is looking pretty good. Yeah, it's not looking too bad, but we have those goblins trying to clear them oh, up there. Oh, look at this minor attack. Witch is still there as this well. This is so powerful. Minor plus witch is so underestimated. And look at this. Look at the demons on the left hand side tower. Minion Horde is actually forced down to clear everything up. Does do a good job, but still so much HP taken off Ali's tower. I mean, <laughs> Montenegro are looking really strong right yeah. now. They are definitely coming back here. And Gormeister is managing to, to do this right now. Yeah, and the minion horde of uh, Ali, you know, barely had any HP, you know, two minions with uh, yeah. almost dying, you know. They, 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 Never he, I mean, able to do Ali anything. Didn't, couldn't even, like, counter push with a miner, you know. He really cannot do anything right now. The witch is so strong, again. We got witch coming down again. We have the giant coming forward, so giant building up here. All right, Does the manage to take the mortar down the end, but I think, I don't know, this tower is so low for Ali. You could just spell cycle with Watch a couple out of the mortar. Okay, there will be the miner. Really nice miner, but the miner is going to get taken down pretty fast, I think. Rascal's going down for Ali right now to help back up this mortar. And Ali is really pressuring here, uh, Gormaster. And uh, th that could be it. The mortar is going to connect. It's going to get a shot off from the end. Yeah, only one shot one off. One shot off. So Gormeister has the Pekka coming forward here. Oh, watch out. That's that's going to be a close game. Again, really Miner. Well with these Miners, though, because the Miner is stopping. But there is no time here. Oh, again, the Miner is going to connect onto the tower. Mortar does get shot on the tower. It's going to get a second one. It is getting a second one. Oh. But there is no big spell again for uh, for Ali. So Still he's going to struggle to finish that tower. Be, well, yeah, I mean, there's 243 HP. We're only going to see a poison plus oh, a minor. Oh, that's going to... Oh, oh Gormeister. Pulling it off in the end. Really well played there. Was it the ghost? Yeah, that was a ghost. I think it was the ghost that managed to get the connection to the tower. You did see it at the end. That the, was the so ghost. close. That was insanely close to Because Gormeister... 43 HP left in that tower. Yeah, Gormeister chose... He chose to not pre-shot, not try to pre-shot that miner and to, to go all in on the left-hand yep. side. That was so close. Definitely pulled it off from there. He was so close. All it would have taken is a zap or a log to take that left-hand tower down oh. from of Gormeister. And Montenegro is coming back. They are. I mean, they are. It's only going to... They need to still win this one and the next one. So you never know. Venezuela could be their strongest player last to come against the... Uh, yeah. But that... Those players. So we'll do uh, Montenegro, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think that will be... Who uh, do you think they're going to pick for their last player? Do you think um, they're going to I don't think Torn that's again? No. 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 Torn... I mean, he plays one deck very well. Yeah. But that's it. But he's know? still dominated with the deck, so... Yes, but if they manage to counter him, that's the end for Montenegro. Yep. So I'd rather put Sasa or Gormister, I believe. Again, have thought of a counter for this giant skeleton deck yet? I don't think we really thought about it. I don't, hey, I guess we'll see. <laughs> we'll have to see, definitely. Right, we've got Lava Hound coming out from Gormeister on the right-hand side. Ali's building up a little bit of a push here. Um, just kind of cycling through a little bit. Okay, so I guess that's a Lava Loon again for uh, Gormeister. Yep. Yeah, classic version. Of the Lavaloon. And Ali, oh, Ali's playing. He's playing an Expo. Yep. He's playing an Expo. He's playing an Expo deck. So, Expo, I feel, is does really well versus Lavahound, but we're going to see how he plays this off. Yeah, that's what we said um, not so long ago again. Um, if if Gormaster manages to get um, one, I mean, one or two hit of the Loon onto a tower, or at least, you know, damage significantly a tower, he might be able to put it off. But otherwise, uh, the Expo is going to dominate the matchup. Yeah, I think so. Just wait till that triple elixir point but I, mm, I don't know he's got poison in his deck so you normally see fireball or rocket in the expo deck you think he is going to be expo you think he's trying oh, to I counter Gormeister a lot oh that's bit? no that's a graveyard. graveyard deck yeah I thought because yes. it did look a little bit off there we don't normally see poison in the expo deck it's normally a fireball or a rocket even potentially the graveyard going down the left hand side getting loads of damage done taking the tower down to just under what Taking down about 1500 HP, so that's so much tower damage at the start there. I think that's pretty much the same, basically. If, uh, if Gormeister manages to take a tower, like for example that left hand side tower right now, well then he's going to be leading the game. Yep, definitely. But we do have the Lava Hound coming forward for Gormeister at the moment. He is going to take the tower with the balloon. Ali knows it. He cannot defend that. I cannot believe. The, I cannot believe Montenegro is come back in this. I this is told crazy. you. This is just crazy. I, did, I honestly did not think this. I told. When I saw the the lineup, you know, knowing that Torin, Sasa, and Gormister were good players, I knew that was a strategy. Yeah. And uh, well, it worked. I mean, yeah, it, for uh, for now, it's working. 
You think I, you think most teams you think they put their best players first and then their worst players last. Maybe they kind of figured Montenegro figured that out a little bit and tried to use that. Maybe I've seen this pretty often. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It does look like uh, Venezuela's strongest players kind of were first. I don't know. They did really well. Well, still, that was trainer Luis and Fusgo. Yep. Who were beaten. So you never know. Still, yeah, some really strong players. Still. Gormaster is going to let his left tower down. He knows he just needs to take a second tower. He has the lead. He does have the lead. We What's other the Valkyrie? Big push here. We've got the balloon. There is no spell. The turret, though. That was a close one for Gormaster. He, he took so Gormaster. much damage on the right hand side. And the balloon is not going to get the uh, the second hit. But I still think the pups are going to come down here. We've got a cycle to another balloon again. So oh, that's see how plays out. So, so well defended fireball. here. That's going to be it. Not even a fireball yeah. needed. Well played, Gormaster. Taking it back. He played so well. Not even dropping a match there. Getting 2 0 against the yeah. two they were there. So I wonder where these fruits think they, they're going to play for the last players then. I have no idea. But yeah, I think Gormaster played very well the matchup anyway. That's yeah. what we said. He had to take a tower. He could lay the second tower, you know, his own tower down. Yeah. He knew he had the uh, the lead. Yeah. Very well played Sometimes here. Sometimes you just want to push up the lane and leave your tower to go down, to yeah. be honest. So, or at least just take the damage. Because I guess you could use that with Elixir as well. It can give you an Elixir advantage purely because you've taken some tower damage and get that counter push going. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think for Montenegro here, the best strategy is to to put Go Goromaster for the last match. For those who don't know, there is going to be a Champions match right now. Yep. The very last match. And basically, each uh, country, each team can take can pick one player uh, to play that last, last match, even if they played before. That's yep, going to be the Champions definitely. match, so they choose their best player, and Venezuela is also going to choose their best player, and they're going to try to, well, win the yep. match. I wonder who's going to beat, though. Are they going to take out Tartan with his random deck, I think? Or I think they try something a little bit different? What I think, for, for Montenegro, I think, uh, well, there is uh, Torin who won 2-1, yep. he was very, very strong. But, again, he's playing one deck. Yep, definitely. And then... Oh, we, still haven't seen, we haven't seen him lose at that deck, though. Have yeah. you seen him lose at that deck in Once. CR Nations? Once. What Once. was it against? Can you remember? I don't remember. Don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. We'll have to go look back and see what deck that was. So but he has like an through. incredible win rate with that deck. Yep. But I think for Montenegro, the safest choice was Gormaster. Because he won 2-0. He played perfectly. Yep. He can play several decks. I think that's the best. Honestly. Tell us, tell us, guys, really, on Twitter. Do not hesitate to just go on Twitter, uh, at Sierra Nations Cup. Uh, and you can you can set, uh, send a tweet with the hashtag also Sierra Nations Cup Playoffs. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let us know who you think is actually going to win this tournament or even the full day, who's going to go through who, or who you think is going to go through to the, the next part of the yeah. CR Nations. What about you? What would you do if you were the coach of Venezuela? What, who would you pick? Uh, for some reason, I would just take Tarim because, I mean, he's got that no, deck. For, that Venezuela, for Venezuela. For Venezuela, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, Venezuela. Um, let's have a look at the... Um, I don't know. I mean, you could probably... Uh, there's loads of good players in Venezuela, to yeah. be honest with you. That's, um, that's it's, it's quite hard. It's just hard on both teams because, I mean, they're both pretty strong. They dom they've been dominating at the start, Venezuela. So Pedro, Raider, Force Wolf could manage to actually take in the end, but I'm not entirely sure. They might go for somebody a little bit different. But do you think they're going to take somebody who's won their set this time round? Well, think they're take surprisingly, else? we've seen a lot in this competition, you know, uh, co uh, ca yeah, captains, yep. you know, picking uh, people who lost, actually. Yeah, definitely. And I've seen well, that as well. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Yep. But, yeah, you know, that could be surprising. That they could take Trena Luis or even Fusgo for advantage. Yeah, well. definitely. Okay, so... It's going to be... We know it's who's going to be. So, it was not what we said. Nope, not entirely. We, we thought something completely different there. That's going to be Pedro versus Sasa. So, yeah. I wonder, are they going to make it to Tenerife, though? You think they're going to make it to this wonderful place? <laughs> Who, Montenegro? Yep. They can make it. I think they can make it, definitely. Okay, so we have one replay here for the last for, from the last match. Goromaster here. Uh, really letting his tower on the left hand side go down. He knows he has the lead and he knows he can go on the right hand side and Such take that right tower. Though. Huge push on the right hand side. That balloon getting that connection to the tower. We do have an offensive graveyard but getting cleared up really fast by um, by the guards plus the minion, mega minion. Yeah, and there, there's going to be the balloon in, in the middle. Well, way too much pressure here for yeah, Ali to definitely. deal with. Even with the ice golem down trying to tank, some of that damage there is never going to help. Especially with the tower that low. You could have just had one fireball to take it off in the end. 
So we got our bands actually coming in. So we have the balloon band. So twice. we're not gonna see twice as well. We're not gonna see any lava hound decks. I think I don't know. I don't like coming against lava hound decks myself. How do you feel about lava hound? Kind of hard to counter. You know, when yeah. you when you don't have many things to counter uh, the air. I mean, it's so hard. Yeah, to especially do. if they got fireball zap in their deck. Yeah. I mean, it can take down your wizard so fast. Um, maybe that baby dragon. You know the deck from uh, the, I think would be actually pretty good against. If you want to win against a lava, uh, lava hound, to me, you need to be able to pressure your opponent, and it's yep. something really hard to do. Knowing exactly when to pressure and when not yep. to pressure, uh, without overcommitting, it's something very difficult to master. Yep. I feel like sometimes against lava hound, though, you know, like you put your tank down the same, you know, like the same weight as where the lava hound's going, and you f I feel like they can just counter you so well, just because you've got that huge tank in the air, and yeah. you've got that giant walking through in the the air destroying that giant so fast so I feel it so hard you need to go in the opposite lane against Lava Hound or maybe even with the Expo going up the same lane <laughs> okay so here like, we are right we got Pedro versus Sasa we have the balloon again banned so we're not going to see potentially any Lava Hound decks maybe going to see some minor Lava Hound decks but nope mm, sim okay Lumberjack so it might be a bridge spam or maybe the giant deck that we've yeah. seen before with the witch, looks like Pedro potentially running minor Pekka control, but again, I'm not too sure right now. Nah, no, that's a bridge spam. Is that bridge? Oh, sorry. Yeah. The royal ghost. Minor and that, that for Pedro, that's going to be the. Um, yeah, I meant Pedro for. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think that's Pekka, Pekka deck. Control. That's Pekka deck. Yeah, that is the Pekka deck. He's definitely going to run the Pekka deck. And Sasa running. Oh, well, hold on. It's not even bridge spam. Giant. I mean, got a giant coming down, but the Pekka going down to try and counter Inferno Dragon behind there as well. So it's Inferno Dragon potentially going to be able to clear this pack up. And that's a witch. What is this deck? I have no clue. I've what never, is Sasa like coming out with something a little bit different here. Maybe to even... I don't know. Is it going to be able to take on this P.E.K.K.A.? That's Let another deck from Torin. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. What Sasa's deck, do you think? Yeah. Yep. That is definitely a little bit of a different deck. It's just witch is becoming so popular right now. It is definitely a stronger card. You can't take it out with a poison uh, zap or fireball zap. That minor to tank from the witch. That was so. That was such, crazy play. Such actually. a crazy play. That was that was that was actually. Cra I, I didn't even notice that for a second. I was really well played, stopping that royal ghost from taking that witch out. With the minions finishing off in the end. Another witch cycled through through now, so might see some damage off here. He can go with a giant just in front if he has the time. Yes, he has the time. He does have that? Can so close right now. Yeah, and, and Pedro doesn't have anything to defend. He doesn't have much elixir, so he's struggling. And Sasa knows it, so he's going to go with the bats. He does have a zap. zap there, yeah. He does actually manage to use the zap in the end. So oh, the miner! But the miner going in, a light Such wizard. a great miner here. Ryugo is going to be able to finish off the witch, but still loads of damage onto Pedro's tower. Montenegro playing so well in these last matches. Sasa, let's see if he's going to pull this off. This is crazy. This is a crazy sweep. I never thought this would happen. Well, me neither. <laughs> I mean, I, I knew there was good players, so I knew they will be able to do something in the end, you know, yeah. but like, they're, they're really coming back so strong. They are, they're so strong in this matchup right now, but we do have the giant push Inferno Dragon locks onto the peck of the Zap going down. And the great poison here to chip away that tower and take out that uh, Electro Wizard in the back. So, oh, look at this dragon. <laughs> so much value so in the counter-attack with the miner and the... I know oh, he doesn't have the poison yet. Not he might have it very pretty. soon. Yeah, I'll have it pretty soon, I think. Yeah. A little bit more cycle oh, to get to it. The dragon was onto the tower. I don't know if you saw this. That was extremely close. Today. And less than 500 HP on the left-hand side tower. So close on right the right-hand side tower, <laughs> sorry. Is Sasa going to be able to pull this off? I mean, he kind of is beating a counter deck right now because we've got minor P.E.K.K.A. minor control versus giant, but... The Inferno Dragon's just putting in so much work for yeah, Sasa at the moment. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, he knows when to pressure. Yep. And that's what made a difference. Even just that minor play and just everything is just the next level. <laughs> Two witches on the field. Like, double the witches. troop cannot do anything. I've never seen double witches, to be honest. And the and giant the that's going to pop just in yep. front. And here it is. The counter attack with the minor and the poison. There's and that's no it. Pekka going down, but there's no way it can stop all that. The no, Zap look at this well. giant onto the tower. That's yeah, the end. Shot. Well played from Sasa there. Taking out the Pekka minor control deck. That's just crazy. So Incredible. And Montenegro, match point. Yep. I mean, it's only going to take one more for them to actually win this right now. So I, what I, is I happening? honestly can't believe that. I thought Venezuela were just going to take a sweep. I thought they were going to win that last game, but Torin just being way too strong and managing to pull it yeah. back from Montenegro and everyone is coming back now it's just crazy not gonna lie just before you know live streaming the match I was like yeah there's gonna be a 4-0 or a 4-1 from yeah. Venezuela then we went into the game they won the first three matches I was like 
Yeah, maybe they can come back because I saw, you know, I saw the good players coming back. You know, the, the, after, you know, in the end, Torian, yeah. Sasa, and Gormis, I was like, maybe they're going to be able to do something. And they are. Right, we're getting to the last match now. Just to remind you, Balloon has been banned. Pedro versus Sasa right now. And this might be the last match. This, this might be a victory be the for match, Montenegro. And Venezuela would be out. They would be completely out of the, co of the yep. competition. That would be incredible. It's crazy. We got Miner going up the right hand side, though. Inferno Dragon locking straight onto it though, but still getting a little bit chip damage onto the tower. And Sasa going, I think, the exact, exactly the same exactly deck. Exactly same, definitely. I mean, if, if it's working for you, why switch? Your best is sticking with it. And Pedro, I think, is playing the Graveyard deck with the, uh, with the Bowler. Yeah, it doesn't like it. We, but yeah, we'll wait and see. We've got Ledge Wizard coming down as well. It seems like that deck so far, Poison going down, get a load of value in all the, the Wizards. Yeah, well played here for uh, for Sasa. He's going to defend the ghost with um, with Justin Lumberjack, and he is going to also counter attack. That might be a minor. Yes, indeed. Might go in the back, but the I don't know. The bowler didn't retarget onto it, so the witch is going to go down, and we have a tornado to the main crown tower as well. So that's going to help Pedro a lot later on in this game. And I believe there might be um, a counter attack here with a graveyard. No, okay, he's just going to no, try I to make value. So. Not with the bats taking out the bowler that fast and. Just not enough build up. Is he gonna? I don't think he's even gonna put the graveyard down now. It wouldn't be a good time to put the graveyard down because Sasa's got a lot of elixir to be able to deal with it. Yeah, he's just gonna wait. And then Sasa is gonna go with a giant in the back. Yep, giant come up the right hand side. Big push building up with the witch as well. Okay, what is Pedro gonna do? I think he needs to keep his battler to defend. Yeah. And then counter attack. So use the tornado. But this inferno dragon that locks onto that bully. <laughs> Take it down in seconds, but Inferno Dragon coming up for Pedro. Gonna take down the giant really fast. No zap going down there from Sasa, so just going completely down there. Maybe he doesn't want the to minor again. Oh, early. hold on. The, the dragon is onto the tower. Whoa. Oh, it does, gets a little bit damaged on, but doesn't quite build up there. The polar definitely gonna be able to finish all this off. And still, Sasa is still ahead. Yeah, still I don't know how, but he is still ahead. Yeah, it's got a little bit of damage on, but we still got a huge build up here. We got the polar down, Inferno Dragon. We got. A ledge wizard down there on the right hand side as well, so definitely building up there. We've got the graveyard coming down the right hand side as well for Pedro's so first graveyard, I think, of the game. Yep, defensive poison though, which worked pretty well. Offensive poison for, Pe for Pedro, and there is still that bowler, you know, who's kind of threatening that tower. Yep, T getting taken out by the tower though, so not too much done there, but does manage to get his last ball off from that witch. He does manage to just weaken it that a little bit more. Bowler's just such a hard counter. It's, uh, this, I've seen a lot of witches, to be honest with you, in grand challenges. Yeah. And Bowler's just one of those cards that's definitely going to be able to counter it. I think Pedro is looking good in this game. There's going to be a defensive poison here for the graveyard. Well played. Yep, well played defensive poison. It's going to take a little bit of damage there because the skeleton's always kind of recent tower to get that little There's bit of damage done. There's so much here on the field for, uh, for Pedro. Tornado to the, the tower as well, but the Bowler isn't managing to actually get any shots in. It's I don't know, but that's it. Oh, he's... Sasa is still going to try to defend. He's going to send he's, a minor. He's still defending a minor. really well, but he's way behind the elixir right now. Looks like Pedro has pulled slightly ahead in the elixir point. Yeah, but that's not the end. Yep, not near the end, but a graveyard could be it. All it's going to take is a graveyard. If he doesn't have his poison, it's going to get taken down. But I mean, he put the giant down. He put the Inferno Dragon down. The giant to defend against the bowler. So, well played there. That's a lot of elixir spent for that graveyard. Okay, the giant will not make it to not the tower. Close, Barely especially. cross the bridge. Like I say, it's just, I think it's going to be so hard for Sasa to even win this against this deck. Just because I feel he's got s such a hard counter to this deck because of the bowler taking down the witch so fast and even yeah. the tornado as well. He's activated the main crown tower as well, so that's he helping him a lot in this game, I think. But still, Sasa is still, <laughs> still here, still, def uh, still uh, trying to get some damage onto the tower. The tornado is just too much here and the giant's not going to be able to do anything. Yep, not getting any connections whatsoever. Poison going on top of all the wizards again though, but just I don't think it's going to be enough damage to be able to take this tower down. Which coming up the right hand side. It's not going to do anything unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Straight into I a bowler, so no chance. Still alive though, pretty low HP at the back. Yeah, the miner is going to be there. There will be also that zap. Not bad, the giant's going to get one hit. And that's it. And the poison here, which is value, but there's no poison here in defense for uh, Sasa, so the next graveyard might be very difficult to defend. Mm -hmm. 
has got those uh, bats though, so the bats going down going to help defend yeah, the poisons here. Poison going up straight away though, yeah. And that is it. Well played to Pedro. So I don't know, Venezuela could actually pull this off in the end. All they need is one more win, but it's exactly the same for Montenegro. Yeah, but right for now. the fourth time. Yes, it's for the fourth it's time. Been and so close. This is this may be the end though. This one we'll see. It's incredible. I, I, yeah. Honestly, everything's gonna come up to. One battle. Yep, one match. One match. It's the last match. I never thought we'd honestly get this thought far. I thought Venezuela was going to take out at least one opponent before they, getting to this point. They seem strong. You know, yeah. at the beginning they were like incredibly strong. But then yeah. like Montenegro woke up and they were like, no, no, it's not going to happen. Definitely. We're going to go to uh, Tenerife. Don't worry for us. And they just came back in the game. And now we're down to one battle. One last battle. Sasa, again, a really strong player, so you never know. I think he's trying, is he trying to find a team for Serial? I'm not too sure if he's got a team for Serial. I have no idea. I don't want to say that. No, I don't want to say anything, just in case. Yeah. Yes. Um, but again, a really strong player. Managed to get the 20 wins in the 20 win challenge. So we're going to get into pretend, well, we're going to get into the last game now. We have Pedro versus Sasa coming up now. This could be it. Baller here for Sasa. He took the graveyard deck. He did take the graveyard deck, so he. I think both. It's both, and maybe the. Well, I yeah, I think so. I think we're both going for the graveyard deck. I've seen. I don't know this deck being played before. It's. Um, it just seems to be a lot of fighting at the bridge. Well, it seems to be, but that's gonna be that, that's gonna be very interesting because you know, one mistake here, one mistake in this yep. match, especially against a mirror. and it will be the end. Defensive poison here. Defensive I think we're going to see a lot of defensive poison. Yeah. They got to hold that poison for that graveyard. Not actually taking any damage to the right hand tower from Pedro, so good defense there. Polar managing to get his last ball off from the tower. And that can make the difference. Yep, can make a huge difference. Sometimes you can just win by even 1 HP. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> the last HP is the most important. Definitely. That is what changes the game. I mean, in this, I guess if it's even 2 HP off of the towers, you can just lose the game because of that, because it's all in tower damage. But Bowler coming in the back for Sasa right now, and Graveheart going offensively for Pedro with a decent HP Bowler right now. Now that's well played here for uh, for Sasa. He, he's taking the, a bit of damage. Yep, Pedro looking really strong right now, though he did 2 and 0 oh, um, full Venom. Yeah, but hold on, because Sasa has the lead in terms of Elixir, so he can maybe do something, use that lead to get some damage onto the tower. Maybe, but I don't think he's got that big of an advantage, and we still got uh, Royal Ghost plus Inferno Dragon coming up the right-hand side for Pedro. It's only one Elixir in it right now. And the Ghost connecting onto the tower, but that's well Before played here. Oh, yep, I mean, that could change the game dramatically. That can help clear up the graveyard so well with the main crank tower activated. It is not the end. And Sasa's going to try to change lane. Going He's going to try to go on the left tower. It's a mass push. Trying to probably just get some sort of damage off here. I think he's under pressure right now to try and get some damage off. That is so close. So intense. The Inferno Dragon on the left hand side. There will be the Electro here for, uh, for Sasa. Oh, good tornado here. No more Electro for Sasa. And it's beginning to be extremely complicated here for Montenegro. Yep, a graveyard going down on the right hand side again. A defensive poison from Sasa, so potentially cleaning out that graveyard, but he's still got the Electro Wizard to deal with. And for now, he is still standing. Fowler on the on the right hand side. Like Pedro is so far ahead, but I mean that main crown tower activated could help him later on, but again, it's only maybe gonna even take spell damage, take down this right hand tower. I think, yeah, Sasa has to make value. Yep. He needs to make value so he can put, like, the graveyard, like, a big graveyard push and, and take the tower on that. Pedro just seems to be having some really good graveyard pushes here. Getting loads of connections in with his graveyard. Yeah, that that's well with the defended here with the, uh, the King's Tower anyway. But we do have a Falk coming up the right hand side tanking for this graveyard. We've got a Tornado pulling the Ledge Wizard over to the left hand side just so he can try to get a little bit more damage in with this push on the right hand side. Sasa's trying to come back. So difficult for him. Definitely. We got Bowler versus Bowler at okay. the moment. The Electro is here. Well done. Oh, that graveyard here for, for Pedro. Trying to put that Electro away. Some crazy well plays. Just pulling that ledge wizard away. Taking damage on the opposing tower. But 
954 HP now, so Sasa looking stall behind right now, but needs to get some sort of big push going right now. He's not that bi he's not that behind, honestly, because he manages to defend perfectly twice. He didn't take any damage, so now he may be just you know making value and taking back the lead, and then he's gonna go aggressive, especially here on the left hand side. He might be able to deal a lot of damage. That we have the ledge wizard there. We have the poison down defensively as well, so definitely clearing up that graveyard fairly fast. That is so intense. And it's close. We're in overtime at the moment. There's still a minute and 30 seconds to go, and it's so close right now. We have the main crown tower activated for Sasa, so that's definitely helping him. But they're slightly, they've got slightly different decks. I mean, one's got Valk, one has got the Royal Ghost. That's the only difference in these decks right now. Graveyard on the right hand side. Sasa's gonna try something. It's not really gonna work out. Nope. Does not get any damage onto that right hand tower. Still looking good for Pedro right now. A minute left to go, and this could be it. And there is no draw. So this game is definitely gonna be the, the, last, the one. last one. 50 yep. seconds. It's gonna be hard here for Sasa. He's trying to build a push. He's trying to do something. It's the final push here. He needs to be able to get through. It's and there is huge so push. I mean, there's double Inferno Dragons now the, here. The, the graveyard needs to go now. Needs now there is no, no defensive poison here for Pedro. Uh, everything getting cleared up at the bridge there. There's going to be the graveyard. And Pedro is going to try to pressure on the right hand side. Still going to be really close though. It's going to be the Valkyrie. Yep. Oh, well played. Not quite equalizing towers just yet though. 15 seconds and it does look like Pedro has taken it for Venezuela. So it looks like Venezuela were so behind there that it just matches, but then managing to actually pull it off in the last match with Pedro. So really well played by Pedro there. Congratulations to Venezuela for taking this set of the CR Nations. Yes, yeah, Sasai really fought until the end. He really yeah. tried everything he could. I think he, he did, did well. Yeah, he did. He, he played, played very well. insanely well, but they just couldn't pull it off again. So again, congratulations to Venezuela. And yeah, I think we're yeah. back later on tonight. Yeah, we're back very, very soon. Yeah, I think it's only a couple hours away. It's just, I think, what time is it now? I think it's about 11 o'clock. I think the next cast is at 2 a.m. Yeah, it's at 2 a.m. So C E S T. C E S T. Yep. So we're going to be looking at some of the matches that are going to be coming up. We have Colombia versus Brazil. That is going to be at 2 a.m. We've got United Kingdom versus China. That's actually going to be at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow, yep. And we have Argentina versus France. France. So we'll see. Are they going to be able, is France going to be able to take Argentina, you think? Yeah, they will. Yeah, they For will, sure. Will they? Yes. <laughs> well, I think United Kingdom are easily going to take China. Yeah, but well, it's just we me being biased, so <laughs> <laughs> we will see that uh, well tomorrow. Yeah, we will see it tomorrow. Well, yeah, it's only a couple hours away till the Colombia and Brazil match starts, so not too long away for that. That's going to be also an incredible match. Yeah, um, uh, that, that's going to be crazy. I mean, oh, this match, you know, we were not expecting such a close yeah. match, and that was crazy. So I think Colombia versus Brazil is going to be so intense. Yeah, it's going to be really close, I think, for those matches, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That I'm, I'm still, I'm still like so surprised. Like Montenegro was able to just yeah. come back in the game, and that was so close. And again, I just felt they put their strongest players last. So yes. But yes. Definitely. Yes. Pedro is still a really strong player. Using him at the end, he just that was dominated so close. at the end. Yeah, it was still really close. It was still close in matches, and still really close in games as well. So here you can see the bracket, and you can see Venezuela going to the next round, and unfortunately, well. Montenegro yep. being eliminated from this World Cup, along yep. with Brazil and Russia, for now. Spain, well, Venezuela does have to take on Spain, so I think that's going to be a really hard matchup for them, I think. But we're going to have to wait and see how that one plays out, because, I mean, Spain did 4-0 Mexico in the last matches. Yeah, and for now, well, we've seen 2-4-3. Uh, uh, kind of interesting, you know. I, I, I didn't think, like, the 8th the, um, of final will be so, so, so close, basically. So we're looking at a repeat, re the replay from Pedro and Sasa in the last moment. Poison coming down the right hand side. It does look like um, Sasa is just really behind here the last couple seconds. He has got his tower down really low, so this is the winning play coming out from Pedro right now. So just leaving that tower really low and managing to win tower damage in the end, so crazy. Yeah, and um, yeah, there is no throw in the Sierra Nations Cup, unfortunately, so yeah, it's, it's uh, a single I tower. There's a lot more games, though, I think. In 
if it was uh, the yeah. draws. I think it's a good way of doing it because, I mean, the, definitely if one opponent has full tower HP, the next one has 500. I think that one with 500 should definitely lose, so. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Well, yeah, that's uh, too bad for Montenegro, I guess, but yeah, that's how it is in the Sierra Nations Cup. Yep. Do not hesitate, uh, of course, to go on Twitter to uh, tell us everything you want about the matches, about wh who you think will win uh, in Tenerife. Uh, you can also uh, hashtag uh, Sierra Nations Playoffs for anything about the playoffs. And uh, you, you've got also the website, the Sierra website Nations Cup. Well. YouTube.com forward slash LVP Clash for the YouTube as well. Yeah, for the replay in Spanish, I yep, think. Yeah, in Spanish, yeah. And here you've got the website, SierraNationsCup.com. You've got all the info you need on that website, really. You can you've got order your tickets actually from Tenerife yeah. on that website as well. Again, they're really cheap tickets. They're only five euros, I think, for yeah. the tickets in Tenerife. So really cheap. So I definitely get on that. There's only, I think, 850 seats in the arena. Yeah, so, I think so. So you have to get your tickets really fast. It's going to be really popular, I think. And if you Tenerife. can't come in person, well, definitely watch the stream. So yeah, that's you, can, gonna yeah, be you can still watch it on Twitch. You can you still watch, watch it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you can come watch bad, us. You know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but it's yeah. There's been some awesome matches tonight, though. Really close between Montenegro Incredible. and Ven Venezuela. So 3-0 at the start. So thanks all for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. We will be back in a couple hours for the next match. Yeah, Brazil Colombia versus Colombia. Versus Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed it, guys, and we will see you guys soon. Bye. Welcome to the Nations Cup, the national teams of World Tournament. Every national team has six players. Each player plays a single set, which is a best of three, and they can ban one card. The matches are made by seven sets. In case of a tie of three sets, the captain of each nation gets to choose the player that will compete for the match point. It will be an emotional roller coaster. Enjoy the worlds.